Good afternoon and welcome to our coverage of the pivotal day in determining the postseason picture in college football. One of the most significant games, indeed, if not the most significant, the one we'll be showing you between Oklahoma and Nebraska in Lincoln, Nebraska. A familiar environment for the past 15 years or so for our Keith Jackson, who is standing by there again on a beautiful day in a sea of red. Keith, you suppose all those Husker fans expect a Nebraska victory? Oh, you know they do. <laughs> We've had a gift with the weather because we have had some terribly cold times in this old series, but today it's quite com The wind is blowing, however, getting stronger all the time and may be a factor before the day is done because it will affect the kicking game. The Cornhuskers came out today in solid red uniforms. First time anybody can remember, and we've gone back as far as 54 years and checking memories, and nobody can ever remember the Cornhuskers coming out dressed like this. So Tom Osborne, I guess, with some urging from the players, trying to find any kind of device that might help jack up his team. If you remember a year ago, they were in the ball game till Keith Jackson turned it around for Oklahoma on an 88-yard reverse and went whistling down, and all the air went out of Nebraska's balloon, and they caved in 27-7. I think if Nebraska wins today, Jim, uh, Oklahoma's going to have to help them. In other words, give the ball away a couple of three times in opportunistic positions on the field. All right, now, Keith, that all-red uniform ploy is the kind of thing we don't normally associate with Tom Osborne. Do you suspect that today's game has any particular significance for him? He's been the center of a lot of rumors late in the season. I don't think so. I asked him yesterday. He said, uh, I have no plans to step down or move up or whatever would happen if he were to make a change. He says his health is good, he feels fine, and he plans on continuing coaching for a time. He didn't say exactly how long. All right, he's going to have to do some coaching today against Oklahoma, sure and we'll look forward to getting back to you and Tim Brandt and Al Troutwick for a full report on that later on as it unfolds in Lincoln. Meanwhile, another significant game today being played at University Park, Pennsylvania, where the Nittany Lions of Penn State are trying to do their part in setting up the, the Fiesta Bowl matchup with number one rated Miami, and they lead 27-7 in the fourth quarter. In the first quarter of the game, Pittsburgh got a Craig Hayward touchdown, which was the first first quarter TD against Penn State in 17 games. But after that touchdown, Penn State responded immediately as Blair Thomas took the kickoff and went 91 yards, the first Penn State kickoff return touchdown since Kurt Warner turned the trick six years ago against West Virginia. That put the Lions back on top 10-7, and they pretty much had things their own way since that time. Of course, remember, Pitt lost quarterback John Conjemi a few games back. They tried to get an extra year of eligibility for Sal Janilla. The NCAA said no. Now Janilla is in the game playing. Now, DJ Dozier had this 26-yard run in the second quarter that made it 17-7 Penn State at the time. And immediately after Dozier scored, there was some extracurricular confrontation in the end zone. Officials issued personal fouls against both Penn State and Pittsburgh. Joe Paterno didn't like it one bit. You can see him coming on to the umpire on the sideline. Very unusual to see Paterno that heated. And you have to wonder if he's also going to be that heated up on January 2 when Penn State meets Miami in the Fiesta Bowl, of course, contingent on a Miami victory over East Carolina on Thanksgiving night. Meanwhile, at Columbus, Michigan leads Ohio State 19-17 in the third quarter. The Wolverines have trailed most of the way in this game to determine the Big Ten representative to the Rose Bowl. They have just gone ahead and remember, the winner of the game will be playing Arizona State in Pasadena on New Year's Day. Cotton Bowl bid up for grabs. Texas A&M trying to nail it down with two season-closing wins in the Southwest Conference. They lead TCU 40 to nothing in the third quarter. It's been an interesting week. Jackie Sherrill said of TCU, they have the best talent in the Southwest Conference. Why aren't they winning? Jim Wacker said, tell Sherrill to mind his own business. Meanwhile, Keith Woodside scored on this 14-yard run, or 15-yard run, to make it 14 nothing Texas A&M in the first half. Kevin Murray threw this touchdown pass of 10 yards to Shea Walker. Murray in the first half, 18 of 26, 221 yards and two TDs. Again, four teams in the running to go to the Cotton Bowl from the Southwest Conference, but only Texas A&M controls its own destiny. Penn and Cornell playing to determine the championship of the Ivy League Penn, looking for its first unbeaten season since 1904. On two Jim Crochicchia touchdown passes, they lead Cornell 17-7 in the third quarter. Holy Cross jumped on top of Boston College 14-0 today as the Crusaders were trying to wrap up an 11-0 season. But since that time on the muddy field in Worcester, it has been all Boston College and the dream has been shattered for the moment for Holy Cross. Here's what it looked like in the first quarter, though, as after a Holy Cross touchdown, moments later following a turnover, Gordon Lockbaum scored on that outstanding pass and run play from 29 yards out. It was 14-0 Holy Cross. 
very shortly. BC came back on this Halloran to Kelvin Martin 14-yard touchdown pass. That made it 14-7. Moments later, they scored on a Halloran to Martin 10-yard touchdown pass to tie it at 14. Since then, it's been all BC. Halloran 17 of 21 for 210 yards, three TDs in the first half. BC headed to the Hall of Fame game to play against Georgia in Tampa December 23rd. Lee Saltz has two touchdown passes for Temple, and they lead Rutgers 19-14 in the third quarter. Paul Palmer has been held to under 70 yards to this point in the game for Temple. Syracuse at West Virginia. Mountaineers leading 17-14 in the third quarter. Don Nealon, the West Virginia coach, rumored a candidate at Purdue and Wisconsin as he's completing his first losing season ever at Morgantown. Wisconsin at Michigan State. Lorenzo White has played only one play. And uh, Dave Yarima has taken up the slack for the Michigan State offense. Spartans lead 20 to 13 in the third quarter. Indiana at Purdue game for the old Oaken Bucket. Purdue leads 10 0 at halftime, even with a 6 5 record. If they lose this game, Indiana apparently slated to go to the All American Bowl to play against Florida State in Birmingham on New Year's Eve. Northwestern at Illinois, 14 3 Northwestern in what will be Francis Pay's last game as interim coach at Northwestern again after what has been a good season for Pay and the Wildcats he has announced that he is not a candidate to remain there on the job. Mississippi State versus Ole Miss. Winner to play Texas Tech in the Independence Bowl. Right now, that looks like Ole Miss bouncing back from last week's loss to Tennessee, leading 17-3 in the fourth quarter. Kentucky at Tennessee in the game for the battered beer barrel. Volunteers lead 7-3 in the third quarter. The winner, apparently, to play Minnesota in the Liberty Bowl, Bowl which has really lost some of its clout in recent years. South Carolina at Clemson. Clemson locked to go to the Gator Bowl versus Stanford, trailing South Carolina 21-18 in the third quarter in one of the roughest and least predictable rivalries in college football. Again, Clemson will be taking its 40,000 ticket buyers to Jacksonville against Stanford on the 27th. Western Carolina at North Carolina State. Dick Sheridan inherited a 3-8 team at State, turned them around to 8-2-1, and, and they won today, and they're slated to go to the Peach Bowl to play Virginia Tech. Georgia Tech at Wake Forest. If Tech wins, it may go to the Blue Bonnet Bowl, and right now, Wake Forest leads 24-21 in the fourth quarter, playing without Mike Elkins, the quarterback, and eight other players. Carolina leads Duke 24-21 at halftime. North Carolina in the picture with the inside track to go to the Aloha Bowl on ABC December 27 against Arizona. Of course, the Tar Heels need to win today and hope that Notre Dame doesn't state a strong case for itself tonight against LSU. So that's a partial picture of what's happening at this moment in the most significant games in college football. Those teams are playing tonight or are idle, and we'll be back with more right after this. College Football Today, brought to you by the Stanley Works. Stanley helps you do things right. And by Radio Shack, your Christmas electronics store. Radio Shack makes your children's Christmas dreams come true. Look, it's a Radio Shack toy factory. Wow, an electronic organ. And there's a programmable off-roader and big wheel wow. truck. Oh, it's the Pop Time Rush, just like I dreamed about. I get the fire helmet. I love Teddy Talk. Is this your dream of mine? Guess I'll wake up in the morning and find out. Battery-operated toys from 259, only at Radio Shack. Everyone needs a little adventure in their life. So why not enter the great Stanley Tool Adventure? You can win a Chevy S10 Blazer to get you away from it all. A mercury-powered Larson Bowl to put you in the middle of nature. And $1,000 in Stanley Tools to help you do things right. Thanks. The Blazer, the boat, the motor, the tools, you can win it all in the great Stanley Adventure. I think this dock needs a little more work. I got a lot of Stanley Tools. Reach for something bigger. To master a more challenging world. To feel the confidence and pride of knowing who you are, what you can do. Show the world your U.S. Navy. Live the adventure. Call 1-800-327-NAVY. The most poignant individual story in today's Nebraska-Oklahoma game, as many of you may be aware, concerns the son of a former professional football star named Jim Tyra. Our Becky Dixon filed this report from Lincoln on Nebraska's Brad Tyra. 
It was bitterly cold in Lincoln, Nebraska this week, but that didn't distract the Cornhuskers' thoughts on stopping Oklahoma. For number 83, Brad Tyre, it will be his final opportunity against the Sooners. The Nebraska defensive end was exposed to the game of football early in his life. His father, Jim, was an outstanding offensive tackle for Ohio State and later an all-pro player for the Kansas City Chiefs. Jim Tyre was an exceptional athlete who seemingly had everything. But when his football career ended in 1973, Jim's good fortune went with it. He fell into tremendous debt. But no one dreamed just how desperate a man Jim Tyre had become. Leaving behind four children, the former football star shot and killed his wife, then turned the gun on himself. Their oldest son was asleep in the next room. Brad Tyre was only 17 years old on that tragic night in September of 1980. As you can imagine, since then, there have been many obstacles in the life of this high school All-American. In addition, Brad's collegiate career has been injury-plagued. But earlier this month, he was able to realize one of his lifelong dreams, to start for the University of Nebraska football team. For the past six years, Brad Tyre has worked hard to turn this terrible tragedy into a triumph of the human spirit. But the memories of that fateful night still linger. I was scared. Uh, I heard the gunshots, and... Um... I didn't think they were coming from within our house. I thought it was coming from next door, and I was, I was still, you know, I was, it was scary. And uh, I was confused, too. I didn't know, I didn't know what was going on. And once I realized that it was coming from inside our house, I, I couldn't uh, possibly imagine what it could have been. After the tragedy, Brad and his brother and sisters moved in with their maternal grandparents. They tried to get on with their lives, but because of their father's notoriety, the family remained under constant scrutiny. My whole family had to grow up in a hurry. Um, at the time the incident took place, um, we, were, uh, we were looked at, looked upon quite a bit you know, by people just to see how we were re reacting to the, to the situation, um, how were we going to... Uh, let it affect our lives, and um, we dealt with it and that we just, we acted normal. Um, we could talk to each other about it, and we did talk about it, which I think was good. Uh, we brought it out into the open, and uh, I think that's a must when something like this happens. Coach Tom Osborne says Brad's stability and maturity are uncommon. Perhaps that's why he's been able to put the tragedy behind him but the feelings for his father have not been forgotten. If you could talk to your father today, what would you say to him? That I love him. It's a Radio Shack Merry Christmas. See, Grandma Cuddly Cat's got a radio in his tummy. Grandpa Abbott said Puppy would cheer up if he had a good home. This year, lots of Pettable Portables are finding good homes because they're huggable outside with real radios inside. In fact, no home should be without one. Thanks, Grandma. Or two. Thanks, Grandpa. Pettable Portable Radios from $11.95, only at Radio Shack. Push your old antifreeze another year, and you might end up pushing your luck. Weak, neglected antifreeze can cause freeze-up and make a radiator look this bad, while the Prestone radiator looks this good. So don't push your luck change it. Once a year with fresh Prestone. This high-performance drink cleans your fuel system to help maintain peak performance. STP Gas Treatment. The high-performance drink for your car. Nazi fugitive who got away with mass murder. An ordinary housewife who swore she would bring him to justice. Nazi! Tara Fawcett stars in the true life story of Nazi hunter Beata Klarsfeld. Tomorrow. You can't hide. It's coming. You're about to get hit with another big energy bill. <laughs> Afraid of high energy costs? Dave Lennox knows the PowerMinder heat pump can cut those bills all year long. Out of boy, Dave! Call Tradewinds and take advantage of their 15 years of experience installing high efficiency Lennox equipment. Quality and dependability, that's Tradewinds. Hawk Heating and Air Conditioning has been serving the New Orleans area for over 38 years. Give us a call for all your heating and cooling needs. Divorce Court, weekdays at 4 on WVUE Channel 8.
Jim Lampley with you again from New York as you look live at a shot of Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska, where very shortly we'll be going back to Keith Jackson and his ball club for today's matchup between third-ranked Oklahoma and fifth-ranked Nebraska. Meanwhile, elsewhere in college football, Kansas and Missouri playing the oldest rivalry west of the Mississippi, both teams coming off the worst loss in school history, and it's Missouri, which is getting bomb for the wounds, leading 41-0 in the fourth quarter as quarterback Ronnie Cameron has thrown for two touchdowns and run for two. Colorado still with an outside chance to go to the Blue Bonnet Bowl, leading Kansas State 7-0 in the first quarter. I'm told behind me by my researchers that it's now 14-0 in Colorado in that game. Iowa State at Oklahoma State, nothing, nothing in the second quarter. Brigham Young versus Utah, and BYU leads it 14 nothing in the second quarter. The BYU quarterback Steve Lindsley was booed in Provo last week when he had to be yanked for sophomore reserve Bob Jensen, but today he's led two touchdown drives and the Cougars lead 14 zip. Lafayette played Lehigh for the 122nd time today in the most played game in all of college football, and it was Lafayette which won at 28-23 as a running back named Bruce McIntyre carried 35 times for 251 yards at a touchdown. Yale and Harvard very quickly, 21-17, Harvard in the fourth quarter. Dartmouth against Princeton in Joe Yukika's last game at Dartmouth, 28-6, Dartmouth in the third quarter looking for an upset. Brown at Columbia, 38-0, Brown in the fourth quarter. And New Mexico at Memphis State, it is 10-0, Memphis State in the second quarter. Now is the time for us to pick up a feature on the weekly CFA Student Athlete of the Week. Again, with that report, our Becky Dixon. The Hayes CFA Scholar Athlete of the Week is brought to you by Hayes Microcomputer Products. Say yes to the future with Hayes. Here at the University of Arkansas, students are urged to build a solid educational foundation for the future. Chris Beckett, this week's Scholar Athlete, is doing just that. Last year, Chris made academic history by becoming the first Razorback football player to earn an undergraduate degree in three years. After completing his degree, Chris still had two years of eligibility left because of a redshirt year. This season, the offensive tackle has helped the Razorbacks to a winning record while pursuing a law degree. My brother and my sister and I are currently enrolled in the University of Arkansas Law School. My father had always urged us to get the best possible education we could. For us, that was a law degree. Of course, I do find it difficult to combine playing football and getting a legal education. It's not unusual for me to find myself spending more than five hours a night studying. I do know, though, it will be worth the effort in the end and will pay off later in life. Earlier this year, Chris Beckett was named Arkansas's Outstanding Scholar Athlete. For his academic and athletic achievements, Hayes will donate $2,000 to the school's General Scholarship Fund. This is a Hayes modem. Plug it into ordinary phone lines, and you can send financial projections to the PC down the hall. Or locate a single part anywhere across the country. Make airline reservations, send or receive electronic mail, or access millions of pages of data from company profiles to every fact in the encyclopedia. The Hayes modem. It's like sending your PC to college for under $600. Quickly, another look at the games with major bowl ramifications. Penn State now on top of Pittsburgh, 34-7, and cruising toward the Fiesta Bowl in Tempe. Michigan leading Ohio State, 19-17, as they go to the fourth quarter in Columbus. Winner to the Rose, loser to the Cotton, probably to play Texas A&M, if the Aggies can beat Texas next week, because they're going to beat TCU today, leading 53-0 in the third quarter. And now, one more look at the beautiful day in Lincoln, Nebraska, which is where you'll be for Oklahoma and Nebraska with Keith Jackson, Tim Brandt, and Al Troutwig after these messages and a word from your local stations. Saturdays get tough. Me and my one-man band will give them a little wholesome family entertainment. Cause sidekicks and Sledgehammer are moving to their new night and time. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. Saturdays at 8, 7 Central. Lee Trevino, I'm looking out for number one. First, look for the compact trucks that are number one in sales. Toyota, look for the trucks that are number one in truck satisfaction. Toyota, look for the trucks that have the power. Toyota, and the payload. You guessed it, Toyota. And look out for guys who can sink a 20-foot putt with a number five tire. Who could ask for anything more? Toyota. 
All right, listen up, Chicken McNuggets. Yeah? You're McDonald's, 100% chicken. I call it. Yeah, McNuggets. Are we just nuggets? You're McNuggets, made from whole breasts and thighs. That's good, huh, Coach? Good, it's the best. Remember, uh, sticks and stones will break your bones. We got no bones, Coach. Uh, just testing you. Now, go get them. It's a good time for the now, six-piece Chicken McNuggets, medium drink, and regular fries are only $1.99 plus tax. Chicken McNuggets, fries, and a drink, just $1.99 for a limited time only. Fall is here, and Helm Paint Supply is celebrating with a super fall sale. Hi, this is Bonky Helm. If you've been waiting for cooler weather to paint, now is the time to save on famous Benjamin Moore paint. Save $5 on Moorguard exterior house paint, just $13.95 per gallon. And $4 on enhanced vinyl latex flat, just $8.95 per gallon. And we have a huge selection of in-stock wallpaper at 30% off. So get ready for fall at... Helm Paint and Supply. Miracles in Medjugorje, tonight at 10 on Nightbeat. From this way, that way, and every which way, you will see people running with the football today in Lincoln, Nebraska. Fast people like Oklahoma quarterback Jamel Holloway. Like Nebraska quarterback Steve Taylor, Taylor and Holloway both coming from California to lead two of the most potent offenses in all of college football. Oklahoma's wishbone offense features the fullback, and the Sooners have a lot of good ones, including Lydell Carr. Nebraska always seems to have a good big one. This year, it's Big Ken Kalen. And then there are the slashing Sooner halfbacks, a half dozen of them, like Spencer Tillman. The Cornhusker caissons go into high gear in all kinds of weather when I back Keith Jones gets loose. And then there are large, fast people who can run long distances for rewards, like Oklahoma's Keith Jackson. And let's not forget the swift wingback, Dana Brinson for Nebraska. A great day for the ground pounders as Oklahoma and Nebraska meet for the 67th time. ABC Sports presents... Thunder and lightning on the plains. The annual between Oklahoma and Nebraska on CFA College Football. Memorial Stadium, University of Nebraska, sold out for the 149th consecutive time, matching number three, Oklahoma, against number five, Nebraska. High quality indeed. Regardless of what our record will be this year, whether we win uh, against Nebraska or not, I think it's probably one of the best teams that I've ever had at Oklahoma, both sides of the ball. We are a great defensive football team, and offensively, our production is probably as good as any offensive team we've ever had. And I think that uh, the team speed and the quickness on, on offense and defense is as good as we've ever had. The uh, only chance you have to beat Oklahoma is with, uh, with great athletes, and we, we feel that we've got some uh, good overall team speed. We've got a very strong defense. Uh, uh, Oklahoma leads uh, the country in a lot of statistical categories, but like they lead the country in rushing and we're second. They lead the country in scoring and we're second. And they lead the country in total defense and we're second. So it isn't like uh, you're dealing with a totally inept football team here and, and uh, we think we can play. And I think it's fair to say that through the ranks of both camps, there is optimism for today's ball game. I'm sure one of these years, sometime, they're going to play this football game between the Cornhuskers and the Sooners, and it's not going to have an impact on the Big 8 Conference Championship, but don't hold your breath, because it has 39 times in the last 41 years. The winner of this game has either won or shared the Big 8 title. Now, the winner of this ball game today, socially, will go on to the Orange Bowl, probably against Arkansas. And the loser of this game will go on to the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans against the SEC champion, and that could be LSU if they can beat Notre Dame tonight. As for the X's and O's of the annual, let's turn now to Tim Brandt and talk about that. Keith, the uh, Oklahoma Sooners are favored in this game, and I think that they should be. This is a very strong team that has shown very few weaknesses throughout the year. Now, there was a breakdown in the Oklahoma kicking game when they lost that one game to Miami. The wind has picked up significantly here today, and the kicking game will definitely be a factor. Offensively, though, 
look for Oklahoma to take that football and test the Nebraska middle early. They will take that fullback, and they're going to run him right at Nebraska All-American middle guard Danny Noonan. Not only to test the middle, but also to set up the corner. They want to option that perimeter. Defensively, this is an Oklahoma team that has not given up a rushing touchdown all year. So how do you keep them off balance? How do you keep Oklahoma on its heels? I asked Tom Osborne how he plans to attack the OU defense. Well, Tim, we're going to try to uh, be as multidimensional as we can. I don't think you can come out just throwing. You know, I've gotten all kinds of advice this week as to what to do, and you got to throw the ball. you got to have Vince of any test of Verde, and we don't have any test of Verde, you know, and so uh, we'll do what we do, and we're still going to have to run the ball, but we'll, we'll try to run some options, and we'll throw the ball some, and and uh, what we do we, it has to work. You know, if it's second and eight and third and seven all the time, then it's going to be a very, very tough day. But uh, if on first down we can get five, six yards on occasion and, uh, you know, get some first downs and move the ball, uh, we'll be okay. And uh, we have a good offense, and I, I think that we'll, uh, we'll show them a lot of pictures and just hope that uh, we can get something done. Multiple formations, a lot of pictures. Tom says he'll throw the ball more today, and I think he will. I think he has to if he's going to have a chance to win this ball game, and he also has to force some turnovers. But Nebraska's going to run that eye formation. That's going to be dominant. They're going to rely on the quarterback and the tailback, as they always do. So if you're Oklahoma now, do you just ignore the pass? Do you gamble? I asked Barry Switzer now, do you load up just to try to stop the run? We throw the ball too well, play action passes like we do. We've got to play secure in the secondary. We won't play five defensive backs. That's been a great thing for us this year, too, because we dominate the rushing game that uh, with our defense, and uh, they end up a lot of second and ten, third and long. We're playing five defensive backs most of the time in a ball game. Uh, that's a tremendous advantage of playing pass defense. Uh, but tomorrow we're not going to have that uh, ability to, to, to stop their running attack that we're going to make the, uh, them be in third and long, second and long, where we can play five defensive backs. So it's going to be a different type ball game that we've played. The series record between the two teams stretching back over six to seven years you see there between these two coaches Tom Osborne and Barry Switzer. Barry has the edge ten to four. Now let's go down on the field and join Al Troutwick. Keith one of the first things everyone will notice today is that for the first time Nebraska is wearing all red. Not Coach Tom Osborne's idea but the idea of a bunch of the seniors who have been thinking about it all year. Yesterday afternoon at four o'clock they took a vote and decided today would be all red day and they're hoping that that will help motivate their team. Now you know there are seventy six thousand opinions as to who's going to win today. First with me is Bill from Oklahoma. Bill. Why do you think Oklahoma's going to win? Well, we've got Bosworth, we've got Jackson, we've got Holloway, we've got Carr, we've got Perry, and the only wishbone Nebraska can handle is in the leftover turkey after Thanksgiving, so we got it made today. Huh? Ooh, pretty serious. Now with me is Bart from Nebraska. Bart, what do you say to that? Well, the only turkey in the state of Bay wears maroon red from Oklahoma, and let me tell you this, they've never faced the kind of speed they're going to have in Nebraska today, and besides that, tell Jim Lampley to get out his Nebraska button because he's going to be wearing it at the end of the game. <laughs> Hear that, Jim? In what could be the loudest crowd of the year, Nebraska's getting ready to take on Oklahoma. Of course, it's sold out at Memorial Stadium. We'll be back in a moment. Right on you! CFA College Football. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Nissan, who invites you to test drive the new Go Anywhere Nissan Pathfinder at your Nissan dealer now. By Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light. It doesn't get any better than this. By Sony Video 8. Weigh the evidence and see why Sony Video 8 is the future. Sony, the one and only. And by Radio Shack, your Christmas electronics store. Who says a guy and his family have to drive a family car they don't like? Not Nissan Stanza. Like who says you can't have road sedan room and still afford braces? Happy guys? Happy. There. Who says you can't have road sedan style and comfort and a great shape? Happy, honey? Happy. Who says you can't have all the luxuries, all the amenities, and still have enough for the finer things? Happy with your Stanza, Fred? Happy. The quality and value of Stanza. The name is Nissan. Choosing a life insurance policy can make anyone feel helpless. You're at the mercy of strangers. Your hands are tied. You feel pressured. But help is never too far away. With Prudential, your agent has the time to talk to you, listen to you, and work with you until you have a piece of the rock you're comfortable with. No wonder more people choose Prudential for life insurance than any other company. You'll feel right by the rock. Prudential Life Insurance. 
Jim Lampley again in New York, out in Columbus. Michigan has gotten its third rushing touchdown of the second half, the first two by Morris, this one by Tom Wilcher. And with 12 minutes left, the Wolves have a working margin at 26-17. Meanwhile, Keith, another on-field tug of war at Pitt, Penn State. Paterno's hotter than ever, and we do have a button in postgame. All yours. Joe's uh, warming up for that last big effort. You don't need to warm up. Both coaches indicated yesterday, coming into this one, that it's almost a relief to finally get the football teams on the field to play the game. You get away from all the hype and all of the noise. Oklahoma came out yesterday and worked out, must have had eight or 900 people pushing into the stadium to watch them, and they went through their slow motion drill and had a good time, entertained everybody. Nebraska came out early on in the day yesterday for their last uh, shakedown, and almost nobody showed up, save a few bold scouts. The records of the two teams reflected there, Nebraska's loss to Colorado in the conference, Oklahoma's loss outside the conference to Miami, and if the Sooners win today, they lock the conference championship. Todd Thompson will be kicking off for the white-clad Sooners and the red-clad Nebraska Cornhuskers will accept the ball. They'll have Dana Brinson, number 33, and Rod Smith, number 88, as the deep people. Oklahoma won the toss, will take the second half kickoff. They have the wind at their back. And the ball just fell off the tee. This wind is going to impact the game. It'll have something to do with it. If it gets down to the point where you're going right to left and you're in field goal posture, you're really going to be in some trouble because that wind is whistling. There's your weather, 52 degrees. That's the coldest 52 degrees I've ever seen. But here we go as Thompson hits it, and there'll be no return. I could see the minute it left his foot, it would not be returned because it's up against the stands and well beyond the field of play. And Nebraska opens up this way with Taylor and Jones as the key people, Schnitzler and Shepard, uh, Shepard being a wingback and the uh, Schnitzler outside. But these are the two guys right here that make Nebraska's offense go, Tim. Taylor has a lot of speed. He has not been able to throw the ball that much. When he has, he's only completed 41%. He's going to have to throw a little bit more. Keith Jones, fastest Husker they've ever had here in the history of the school. He is a flyer. His instincts are good. He's going to have to have a big game. All right, let's see where the big what the big boys do. A yard off the ball in this opening possession. Bosworth jumps up into a slot, does not blitz. They run the sweet play to the left side. Jones with a little pause there. Patient got himself four yards on the carry before Derek White brought him down. Nebraska's offensive front now. Maggard 265, Parker 270, Cooper 250, McCormick 265, Welter 280. And that's the side they go to. McCormick and Welter. Big men. It's a right-handed team. It has been all year, and this is the reason. McCormick and Welter are both big eight, all big eight type players, and they are strong. And the tight end is Todd Milliken coming off a hamstring pull. Interesting that they ran left the first time, but they go back to the right side. It's a bad pitch by Taylor. The ball is bouncing around and finally covered by Nebraska. Back on the two-yard line, Taylor pursuing the play, recovered his own bad pitch. And Nebraska's lucky Oklahoma didn't come away from there with a the ball even possibly a touchdown. Biggest difference between these two teams, Keith, is the fact that Oklahoma takes the ball away and doesn't have any turnovers itself, plus 14 in the giveaway takeaway. That's not the case with Nebraska. They've turned the ball over quite a bit this season. They're only plus one. This was a bad pitch. They're lucky that Oklahoma didn't score a touchdown on this one. And now the Sooners are backed up. They give them possession at the four instead of the two, where it is third down and a half mile. They stay conservative with it, give it to Jones, and he wedges his way out to the 10. And now, here comes some real pressure. Coming in to do the punting for Oklahoma is John Croker. John Croker will have to kick the football into a very strong wind. He's averaging just under 40 yards per punt. So if ever in his young life he needed a big one, he needs it right here. Patrick Collins is number 33 and deep for Oklahoma. There is no pressure on Croker. He gets it out, and it's not a bad kick into that win, and it is fumble, and it is recovered by Oklahoma. Ricky Dixon, a defensive back, came up with a loose football for the Sooners. So it's getting cooler as the day goes on. The ball must be hard and slick. 
You know, I think it is the weather. They say it's 52 degrees. It feels much colder. The ball's hard. This was just hit him right in the stomach. I think it came off the breastplate of his shoulder pads and bounced away from him. Now Oklahoma has the break because Nebraska could have very easily gotten this football. I think for Nebraska to have a shot today, they've got to keep this ball game even at least for the first quarter so they can gain momentum. Oh, Mark, just short of the 44-yard line where it's first down for the Sooners. Holloway is your quarterback, and there comes the upset out of the wishbone, and turning the corner, it's Patrick Collins. And Collins goes disappearing into the crowd. The ball was bouncing around. The Nebraska trying to claim it. And went out of bounds. No way. Went out of bounds. Well, how unusual is that, Keith? Nebraska the ball on the ground twice early in the ball game now. Oklahoma hasn't had a turnover in two games and now they've dropped it the first two times they've touched it. Here they got the corner. They had all the pressure they wanted out there. He was almost around but Collins felt the inside pressure tried to turn it back and right there you can see that he was stripped of the football and stripped quite nicely by Troy Holloway or Tony Holloway rather and the ball just gets out of bounds. Collins hurt on the play. Patrick uh, wobbling around, and he's coming off the field. So he's out of the ball game at least for the moment. And kind of holding his stomach look like. So he will leave the lineup, and uh, Leon Perry, number two, will come in. Perry, a 225-pounder, bigger than Collins, but not as fast. That's unusual to see Collins go out of a ball game too. He is really durable. He has yet to miss a game at Oklahoma. It's marked down at the 33-yard line, and it's Oklahoma's ball, first down. Holloway coming at you. Caught behind the line of scrimmage and thrown down, and it's Broderick Thomas who does it. Broderick Thomas was out here yesterday for the final workout. He was so high, he didn't touch the ground for the last 24 hours. And he makes a big play right there. There's your lineup for Oklahoma. And the loss now is all the way back outside the 35-yard line. So Holloway's the key man for Oklahoma. Barry Switzer long ago called him the best wishbone quarterback, oxen quarterback he'd ever seen. And they've had some great ones at Oklahoma. Second down. Into the middle, carrying the ball, Earl Johnson, the senior out of Dallas, and Broderick Thomas brings him down. Well, you talk about loading up. Everybody now is on the line of scrimmage. There's Noonan. They're trying to test him right away. They're trying to ride him out of there. But he's holding his own, more than holding his own. That's a guy that bench presses 500 pounds. One of the best players they've ever had here. He just jams up the middle, lets everybody else come free. That time, Nebraska gambled. They put 10 men up front, Keith. They only had one man in the secondary. Ball is on the Nebraska 31-yard line. It is third down and eight. There was movement along the line, but the man got back. Holloway going around the corner, getting blocking over there, and he's going to have a first down as he just got past the marker, and Mark Munford brought him down. Sun is out right now as uh, Oklahoma gets its first down. The offensive front for the Sooners, Phillips 275, Hudson 280, Simpson 265, Anthony Phillips 280 at guard, Greg Johnson 295 on the right side, and Keith Jackson 63 to 40, and I think on his way to being one of the best football players in the country. The big tight end. From the 23, they go inside with it on the first option to Earl Johnson, and Johnson is down at the 20. Defensively for the Cornhuskers, they line up this way, and the two guys there in the middle, Noonan, the middle guard, and Spockman, the tackle, those two people, I think, have to put some pressure on the Oklahoma wishbone. They've got to penetrate some. Just inside the 22. Didn't get as much out of it as I thought he did. Holloway keeping it. Just missed by one, and now he's thrown out of bounds at the 16-yard line. The man who came flying through was the free safety, Brian Siebler, and just missed it. 
two plays in a row now. Siebler's come up to take the quarterback on the option. He has not been able to make the tackle. Last time they made a first down, this time they got a pretty good gain out of it. It'll be third and three, but Siebler has to come up quickly. He's got the quarterback on the option. That's his responsibility, and once he gets there, he has to make the tackle. It is third down and three now for Oklahoma at the Cornhusker 16-yard line. Jackson was out for a moment. He is now back in the lineup. And Parham is in there, number 82, so they got two tight ends on the field right now. But with Jackson, you don't necessarily think normal tight end play because the man can do so many things for you. Tom Osborne said several times this week that the thing that concerns him more than anything else is giving Oklahoma good field position. They had the poor pitch, the bad pitch, mishandled early in the ball game. Nebraska did. They punted, gave Oklahoma good field position, and here come the Sooners. They have been cashing them in this year, with the exception of the Miami game, when their kicking game betrayed them, and they were beaten. Well, Osborne said, if you make them go 80 yards, we can play with them all afternoon. If you make them cut the field in half, give them good field position, it's going to be a long afternoon. All right, the Sooners come up. Third down and three at the Husker 16. Pitches the ball back to Perry. Perry puts his head down and dives for the marker, and he's short, I think. Boy, that's a big play. If you can hold him here and make him go for a field goal and just get three points out of it, that's that's a great goal line stand. Penn State beating Pitt 34-14. So the Nittany Lions have done their part to set up the, quote, national championship game. Now it's up to Miami Thanksgiving night against East Carolina. Looks like Oklahoma's going to go for it on fourth. No kicker on the field, and they have a good one in Tim Lasher. Well, emotionally, I think it becomes a factor here on both sides of the ball. A little less than a yard. Johnson is your fullback. Tillman and Perry in the wishbone with him. Drop the football. What ball came loose? The Cornhuskers have stopped the Oklahoma Sooners. The ball squirted right through his hand. Looked to me like Tillman covered it, but that didn't make any difference. It was fourth down. You hit that right on the nose. This will be a tremendous psychological lift for the Nebraska defense. Look at this. See, the ball never comes into his hands cleanly. It hit his top hand. His lower hand never closed on it. The ball got loose, and fortunately for Nebraska, it went backwards rather than going forward in the surge. I think Holloway was, had called his own number, probably going for a quarterback sneak, and he was looking around to see which side to dive on, and he never got the ball. Snake River, Wyoming, and Old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. The Snake River means fly fishing for lunker cutthroat trout, and Old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp Old Milwaukee beer. And smooth, golden Old Milwaukee light. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place, an Old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee light. Fellas, it just doesn't get any better than this. Brill cream, a little dollop will do ya. It's dab. Not this. New Brill Cream Mousse. A little dollop gives my hair soft, natural control all day. Mmm. New Brill Cream Men's Grooming Mousse. Brill Cream, a little dollop will do ya. Huh, you're wearing this because of your new secretary. Me? I'm wearing ice blue aqua velvet because the icy cool formula makes my face feel great. But that scent, it's sinful. There's something about an ice blue aqua velvet, man. On the Disney Sunday movie, Bo Bridges, Lloyd Bridges, and introducing Jordan Bridges. The boys get mighty attached to that goose. The Thanksgiving promise. A man has got to keep his word. At Columbus, Ohio, with nine and a half minutes to go, the second Carsados to Carter touchdown pass the game for Ohio State has narrowed Michigan's lead to 26-24. And in the Penn State-Pittsburgh game, Penn State starting quarterback John Schaefer left the game in the third quarter, was icing his hands on the sideline. No final report yet on the injury. His backup, Matt Kisner, played well. All yours, Keith. And Nebraska comes out at the 15 first down, handed inside to Ken Kalen, the fullback, and Kalen is just clobbered by one of those linebackers. Looked like Dotty Jones, number 50, was the man that really hit him. 
And when you talk about 50, you're talking about Oklahoma defense because, of course, that's the one that Bud Wilkinson put in down there, and they've had success with it ever since. And the big guy in that linebacking core, of course, is Bosworth, number 44. But they've got four outstanding linebackers. Second down and 10. Taylor on a little delay gives the ball to Brinson. Brinson tries to bounce outside, and Sonny Brown tracks him down. Knocks him out of bounds after he gets the ball up to about the 20. Well, make it the 19. One of the big adjustments Oklahoma made for this ball game is moving Sonny Brown from safety to the cornerback spot, knowing that on that corner they're going to be tested with the option almost all afternoon. Sonny Brown played that well. He stayed at home, never took the play action, and waited for the play to come to him and made a nice tackle. Now the Huskers are looking at third down and six from the 20. Taylor keeps it. They're tracking him down from behind, but he turns up field, dives for the marker, and he's going to have a first down for Nebraska as Troy Johnson brought him down. They say that Steve Taylor, talent-wise, is the best quarterback they've ever had here at Nebraska. Again, it's play action. The fake is not good, but it looks like he's going to throw. That right there gets the attention of Oklahoma, but he has the running ability, and he took up... He took up the inside seam of that. Did you see the commitment to the outside? He turned it back inside and got the first. From the 25 for the Huskers. So they've got a little real estate to operate on now. Taylor looks up, wants to throw, does throw. Pass is incomplete. Pass intended for uh, Schnitzler, Rob Schnitzler. He turned back looking for the ball, and the ball was thrown to his other side and thrown away. There's another factor that you talk about outfielders in baseball fighting the sun. From the position where Schnitzler was at that time, he is looking right back into a very vividly bright sun. I mean, you just threw down to yesterday playing catch just to test the sun, see the angle, and I mean, you can't see a thing when you look back into it. Tell me about it. I'm the one that had to catch your bullets in my <laughs> chest. Yeah, some bullets. Second down and ten. Taylor. Got around the corner and got the first down. Knocked out by Derek White. And the crowd hoots a little bit because they felt he might have hit him a little late, but momentum carried him into that group of red folks over there. Boy, he's a threat on the corner, isn't he? This is the guy that broke all of Marcus Allen's high school records at San Diego Lincoln High School. 3,211 yards in high school. That's almost two miles. Average 11 yards per carry, and you can see why. Outstanding move on the corner that time. Got to the outside, got the first down, and this is what the crowd was booing about. They thought he was hit late, out of bounds, by Derek White. Walmart just over the 37. First down, Nebraska. Taylor still got it. There's another bad pitch, and Sonny Brown is the man that made it. Brown got his hand on it, and Sonny's jumping up and down, moaning, because he had six in his pocket if he could have caught it. He's a tough cornerback, isn't he? He's the cow. He's the, the cowbell out there. I mean, he leads them, the bell cow. <laughs> he leads them out there. Everybody follows him. He makes all the big plays. You're a city kid. Yeah, that bell cow, you know, that's your kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Tough defensive bunch. <laughs> On second down, Taylor, little delay, gives the ball off to Keith Jones. That play was tentative from the very beginning, and it didn't get much either. It got about a yard and a half. So they're looking at third down and close to 13. Dante Jones, number 50, the big junior linebacker out of Dallas, made the hit. They say Bell Cow is the guy that plays well on Saturday, shows up to practice on Monday without a lawyer, without an agent, and without going to the media. Third down and close to 13. Taylor has all day, gets it off. Brinson. Brinson is caught from behind by Scott Gall. First down, Nebraska, Oklahoma, 26.
We said they had a pass today. They had to be successful passing. Dana Brinson runs a 4-3-5. They have a two-deep zone going now for Oklahoma. He cuts it across the middle. He's isoed on a linebacker and picks up 38 yards. There's no way a linebacker can stay with Dana Brinson. Came all the way from Valdosta, Georgia to play football for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. 38-yard pickup, and the Huskers now make it a threat. Taylor still going. Gets it off to the sidelines, and the pass is good. Down at the 15. Caught by Rod Smith. And Sonny Brown made the hit. Well, we told you Steve Taylor's completed only 41% of his passes, but again, let's go back to high school. He broke all the passing records set by Damon Allen. That's Marcus's brother, who's a pretty fine athlete. But this is made by the wideout. You see how he came back for the football? That's a good play. He drove the defensive back off. Rod Smith planted, came back to meet the ball, and kept his feet inbounds. You only need one foot in. Rod Smith, fine play. 11 yards, first down Nebraska, Oklahoma, 15. First quarter of play. Start was not very pretty, but since both teams have wobbled around, the Huskers starting to move it some. This is Keith Jones, and he's caught inside the 10, dragged down by David Vickers at the 8-yard line. Doug DuBose, remember, injured before the season started, missed the entire year. Keith Jones had to step in and do the heavy work and he's gotten better all through the season. See that reverse pivot coming out? That sends the linebacker on a false step. Then he comes this way and pitches it out quickly. They're using a lot of different formations. They're pressing the corners. They're keeping Oklahoma on its heels. Second down, four. Just inside the nine. Give it to Jones. He's at the five and over the five. He may have a first down. Dottie Jones made the tackle. It is... First and goal, Nebraska. He's down in this area. You better start looking for Keith Jones, too. They call him end zone Jones because of all the touchdowns he scores. He leads Nebraska with 13 touchdowns. Great speed on the corner. They've got Vaughn Shepard in there at that wingback spot now. The better blocker. He's 15 pounds heavier than uh, Brinson. Taylor keeps it and goes to the two. And you could hear the collision between Taylor and Bosworth all the way to the drugstore. They get in here. If Nebraska scores here, it's going to be one whale of a football game because this crowd will be in it. The Nebraska kids will be believing. Again, it's Taylor using his instincts. Got a pretty good ticket that time. Punch by Brian Bosworth. Bosworth slides down the line, does it as well as any linebacker. Avoids all contact, comes up and just helmet to helmet. That's power football. Second and goal from the two. Go inside with Keith Jones. Dive, touchdown, Huskers. right here the tailback we told you to look for him Keith Enzone Jones this is his fourth touchdown of the year more importantly we told you in the open that Oklahoma had not allowed a rushing touchdown all year this is the first one of the season it goes all the way back to last year's Orange Bowl the first quarter when Tim Manoa scored for Penn State Creek Lakeman holds Dale Klein kicks and it is good at six minutes and 27 seconds to play in the first quarter Nebraska seven Oklahoma nothing with the Hayes modem a sales manager can check inventories in manufacturing or track shipments through the mainframe across the country a lawyer can get precedence to prepare a brief a farmer can check commodity prices to determine when to sell and an investor can get the information he needs from Dow Jones, Dun & Bradstreet, or even the government. The Hayes Modem. It's like fitting a 10,000-book library in a 10-inch case. 
champion Nissan racer Roger Mears knows toughness and value make a winning machine. Introducing the hard body 4x4 value plus package. Hit it! With options worth $630 at no extra charge, get this tough tube bumper. Sliding rear window, fender flares, and much more. A total Nissan package worth $630, yours for... Nothing flat. The hard body 4x4 is value plus. The name is Nissan. The 51st meeting of an SEC classic. Mike Shula and ninth-ranked Alabama collide with bowl-bound Auburn. CFA action continues next Saturday. Keith Jones stuck it in the end zone. Oklahoma went for it on fourth and short at the 15. Nebraska stopped him and put the ball in the end zone. Coaching staff says the biggest improvement this kid has made is on his inside running. He gets inside, he uses his juke moves. He's wearing a cast they made, especially for a thumb. He tore ligaments, didn't play. One game, came back last week, played well. They've got that cast on the thumb today. He was operated on just two weeks ago. All right, Derek Shepard and Earl Johnson, all the deep people. Nebraska's Dale Klein will kick into the wind. And we'll see now what happens as Oklahoma gets the ball back. That's a pretty good kick into the wind. It hangs up there a while, and Johnson finally accepts it at the nine, gets a hole up the middle, and comes out to the 30. 21 yard return. Jeff Jamrock brought him down for Nebraska. Now, if we can see some inside pressure from Noonan and Spockman and, uh, and Thomas, look out. We want to keep an eye on number 19, too. Siebler playing in the secondary. His responsibility is Holloway on that option. We've got to keep in mind, Oklahoma has outscored its opponents 110 to nothing in the first quarter. Right now, they trail 7 nothing. Lydell Carr is in at fullback for the center. He has the ball, the fullback. It's a quarterback, fullback offense. And Holloway just simply turned around and handed the ball to him, and the offensive line surge is going to be worth about four yards. Roderick Thomas, 89, and Mark Munford combined for the tackle. Look at Texas A&M, 74 points. My goodness. Arkansas winning. If the Aggies go to the Cotton Bowl, the Hogs are going to Florida to the Orange Bowl. Second down, long short, six, long five. Holloway gives the ball to Carr. Carr's buried for a loss of a yard by Tony Holloway. Omo is wearing Nebraska red right now. On third down and about six. Jackson. Holloway down the line, flips it off to Collins, back in the game, Collins caught, you're going to have a face mask call against the Nebraska Cornhuskers, Holloway reaching for the speedy Collins, grabbed inadvertently the face mask. It's an automatic call. There are your big eight officials for today's ball game. It'll be five yards. Take another look at it. This time, let's keep an eye on big number 91, Tony Holloway. Holloway is playing the right end. He's not in the picture yet. Now, as they bring the option down, Jamel reads the pressure. And here comes 91 Holloway on Collins. There's the hand. It's up on the face mask, no question about it. He knows it and tries to get his hand off of there and bring the right arm around. By then, it's too late. The flag is thrown. That's not flagrant, though. A lot of times that happens. You go okay, to make a tackle, yards, your face hand gets caught up in there. Against the defense, it'll be third down and about two. I wonder if he had any trouble shaving. Beating Mississippi State today. It looks like Ole Miss will be in the bowl. Coach Brewer turning things around down at Oxford. On third down and 
yard and a half. Certainly a lot different than third down six and a half. Ball comes out to the 39 yard line. Leon Perry is in the backfield. Number two. Carr stays at fullback. Perry has the ball. He didn't make it. He did not make it. Somebody just nailed him. Helmet to helmet. I think it was Danny Noonan and Neil Smith. But you've got another flag down, so hang on. This is going to be a personal foul, too. I think Brian Davis, 32, got a little bit feisty down there for Nebraska, and it's going to be against the Cornhuskers, I believe. Well, that's a silly mistake. Oh, because they had him stop. But you can't play this game without some temper. Well, it's usually the second guy that gets caught, too. See Davis there pulling his jersey, saying, hey, they're holding me, they're holding me. That's why I threw the, the arm to try to get loose. That's what Tom's saying, too. Says, they're holding him. That is a big penalty. Takes the ball to the Nebraska 45. Or is it ever? We got a dead ball, late hit personal foul on the red, first down. Here's the play again. Look at the line surge. See all the red jerseys in there? Just stop it right now. No chance for a first down. All right, now watch 32 coming in the right hand of your screen. There he is right there, and there's the late hit. Saying, don't hold me, pal. First down, Oklahoma. Holloway pitches it back. This is Tillman. And Spencer goes down after a yard. Roderick Thomas is a wild man. The sophomore from Houston is all over the field. They say he's the best defensive end they've ever had here in Nebraska. Runs a 4-6-40 for a big man. He's 235 pounds. He's the nephew of Mike Singletary. Number 89 right there. Boy, he was high yesterday. He called me the minute I walked into the stadium. I saw him started <laughs> talking football. Second down and nine. Oh, what a hit. Lydell Carr is buried by number 98, Lee Jones, a junior from Omaha. Boy, do you think Tom Osborne has Nebraska ready to play? Right now, they're dominating the line of scrimmage. You want to watch a guy flying to the football, let's keep an eye on Brian Siebler, the secondary safety man. He's up there in support every play. It's third down and right at 10, and Holloway loops it up for Keith Jackson, and he's got it, and he's got a first down at the Nebraska 16-yard line. Charles Fryer trying to defend, but Jackson is a big man, and he can haul it. He's 6'3", 240. Now, this is a team, keep in mind, that didn't throw the football once all last week in their game, so now you, you can't respect it unless they hurt you with it once. Well, here's the one time. Keith Jackson's not the guy you want to hurt either because he can fly. He's a, he's a big, big, strong guy. But they were playing that one deep. The secondary man, everybody else was up tight, and Jackson can outrun you. And the Sooners now with a threat at the Nebraska 16. Second time they've been down in this neighborhood. Outside with it to Collins. And Collins is quicksawed at about the 14-yard line. Time remaining first quarter, three minutes and nine seconds. Let's pause five seconds for our local station's identification. Second down and eight for Oklahoma. Nebraska leading seven to nothing. Sooners were stopped cold on the Nebraska 15 when they had a big scoring opportunity. Both teams had a ragged start, but Nebraska, after stopping Oklahoma, March right down the field and score. Now Oklahoma is trying to respond, and a 15-yard personal foul penalty has been the big, big play in this possession. This is Lydell Carr, the fullback, and he just keeps on pounding, keeps his legs moving, and he gets inside the five-yard line. 
If Holloway is the main cylinder of the wishbone attack, then Lydell Carr is the key. Carr is a bruising runner whose ability to stay healthy has been an important factor in the Sooners' success. He's 6'2", 225 pounds. It's first and goal, Oklahoma, just inside the Nebraska five-yard line. They go back to a double tight end alignment now as Parham comes into the ball game for the Sooners. In the backfield, it's Carr, Tillman, and Collins behind Holloway. Holloway keeps it, turns it, dives, touchdown, Oklahoma. Six yards last week against Colorado. He reads quickly, he reacts instinctively, he has phenomenal escape dimension, and watch this surge toward the goal line. Now, he didn't cross the plane, but the ball did, and that's all that has to take place. Tim Lasher for the extra point. And it is good. At two minutes and 36 seconds, first quarter, we are even at seven. You see, today is tomorrow in Japan. So when you come for Clark tomorrow, it will be today. Life takes a time, remember. Roma wasn't built in a day. Take it to Midas. At Midas, we can replace mufflers, brakes, shocks, or struts on most foreign cars, and we won't take all day to do it. Time is money. Take it to Midas. If I'd wanted it tomorrow, old chap, I wouldn't be here today. Take it to someone you trust. At Dean Witter, we'll help you put your financial life in order with a combination of investments that'll fit your needs just right. Everybody is somebody at Dean Witter. A member of the Sears Financial Network. As your life changes, your needs change. That's why you'll find experts in investments and real estate and insurance together at the Sears Financial Network. Come to a center at Sears or a member office for advice you can trust. Before the first Oklahoma football game in 1895, dirt was hauled in to fill trenches dug up by buffaloes on the field. Jim Lampley in New York up in Ithaca. The Ivy League race has been decided as Penn finishes at 10 and 0 under first year coach Ed Zubrow, 31 21 winner over Cornell today. Penn, unbeaten, rated sixth in Division I AA, will not go to the playoffs in that division because the Ivy League forbids it. Keith? Thank you, Jim. Jamel Holloway, who scored the touchdown to get the Sooners on the scoreboard, and Tim Lasher with the extra point conversion to tie now has kicked 134 straight in his career. That puts him ahead of Van Tiffin of Alabama, who is idle this week. High, long kick by Thompson into the end zone. No return by Rod Smith for Nebraska. And we've got a little ruckus breaking out on the field, but you can expect that in this particular neighborhood scuffle because all feelings are high. The big red of the north, the big red of the south. The way they started today, I wasn't sure that uh, for what we might not have overstated the element of quality, but I think the last two possessions by Nebraska and then by Oklahoma clearly defined the quality of these two teams. All right, the Huskers will go from the 20 with Kalen and Jones in the I formation. Taylor keeps it. No, he doesn't. He gives it to the fullback, Kalen. And Kalen, who is a 225-pounder from Westerville, Nebraska, is brought down by Brian Bosworth. The gain is about two and a half yards. Here's Bosworth again. His talents have been well documented. No false steps, fights off one, fights off another, tucks the tail, puts him on his back. Second down and about seven. broken play they were going to run the wing back reverse but Oklahoma penetrated got across the line so he just tucked it away and took it up tried to get some yardage out of it another traditional next week from Legion Field in Birmingham 
Auburn and Alabama. Those were two teams rolling along mid-season. People talking about national championship. Both have been shot down twice since. It is third down now. They need four. Jones, the eye back, will not get it. Bosworth, Brian, Johnson for Oklahoma. Bosworth and Johnson. Take a look at the line surge again. The big red firing off there. But see how Oklahoma catches the blocks, fight them off, get rid of the blocker, and now all of a sudden you come up, penetrate, and make the tackle. And look, one, two, three, four, five, six guys for Oklahoma around the ball carrier. In the punt, John Croker. First kick today was 38 yards out of his end zone. There is no pressure. Gets it up into the wind. Going to hang it up there a little bit. They disdain the fair catch call, though, and the ball is accepted back at the 36, a 30 Six-yard punt. Ricky Dixon, defensive back, handling the football for the Sooner. So with 42 seconds to go in the first quarter, a 7-7 ball game, the Oklahoma Sooners will go to work first down at their own 36. I'll play down like I'll play down like 1986 Road Atlanta. The Nissan Z's are back to defend their SCCA championship. But this year, they didn't just win, they dominated. Paul Newman and Jim Fitzgerald won two once again in their 300 ZX's in the top GT1 class. Scott Sharp leads the Z Parade in a one through five finish in the GT2. In all, two national championships, eight top three finishes. Drive a 300 ZX yourself. Know what being first is. The winner is 300 ZX. The name is Nissan. Thank you for calling Bob's. I need my VCR fixed. Please direct any service questions directly to our distributor in Indonesia. Got any trees? With many audio and video products, good luck finding good service. But at Curtis Mathis Home Entertainment Centers, we promise you quick response and dependable service. You see, our terrific audio and video products aren't the only reasons it's worth coming to Curtis Mathis. Curtis Mathis, is it really worth it to go anywhere else? <laughs> This is the 67th game between Nebraska and Oklahoma, but so far the 1971 game is remembered more than any other. This 72-yard punt return by Johnny Rogers started the Cornhuskers on their way to a 35-31 victory and eventually a national championship. Husker faithful call it the game of the century. Okay, the drum corps is in place, and the Sooners who scored in their last possession on the football just outside their own 36 in a 7-7 ball game. They break the bone, Holloway gives it inside to Liddell Carr, and he's up to the 39. There he is stopped by Kevin Parsons, a senior from Springfield, Missouri. Time remaining in the first quarter of play. It was interesting, as soon as Oklahoma broke the bone that time, Nebraska changed his defense as well. Brian Siebler's been playing back in the secondary by himself. That time, number five, Brian Washington, the strong safety, dropped back with him to make it a two-deep zone. Washington, one of the few freshmen to start. See Siebler back there by himself on the end. Go back to that fullback again, and Carr slashing in over the right side, running behind big Anthony Phillips. will move the ball near the 43 with the two linebackers, Munford and Parsons, bringing him down where well, we played a quarter in Lincoln we're all even at seven we're MCI racing hard to be your communications company we never coast we're geared to win MCI competes internationally offering you the world's most extensive range of voice data and messaging services our competition is good. We have to be better. And because we compete, you win. MCI, communications for the next 100 years. This is where we make the new 3M Surgical Clipper by Remington. Hospitals are now using this advanced product, replacing blades, to shave patients for surgery safely and comfortably. You can also benefit from Remington's advanced technology. 
This charger stand keeps the Remington microscreen rechargeable, continually charged. It never needs a cord, and it shaves as close as a blade or your money back. And the Lady Remington rechargeable also shaves without a cord. Advanced shaving technology, only from Remington. Hi, Andy. Ready for the history final? History final? Is that today? It sure is. Let me borrow your notes, will you? Hope you have your turn paper finished. <laughs> Wait, I've forgotten which room it's in. Keeping up with schoolwork isn't easy. That's why the computer more kids learn on is Apple. To those people who haven't yet said bye-bye basics, hello, Nissan Sentra, who haven't experienced the longer, wider, roomier Sentra, who haven't known the superior fit and finish of Sentra, those people who bought basic when they could have bought a new 1987 Sentra, Nissan would like to say, relax, we've got one waiting for you. The quality and value is Sentra. The name is Nissan. On a last-ditch drive for Ohio State in Columbus, Matt France missed a 45-yard field goal attempt with a minute to go in the game. This just a few plays after Ivan Hicks of Michigan had tipped away what looked like a touchdown pass from Carsatis to Chris Carter in the end zone. Michigan held on, beat Ohio State 26-24, goes to the Rose Bowl, Keith. And Ohio State will be off to the Cotton Bowl, and the Orange Bowl disappointed. They have pursued Ohio State with vigor, but they couldn't talk the Big Ten into coming to Miami. Third down for Oklahoma and four and a half as Holloway comes down, turns the corner, slips and goes down. Close to his first down. He's close. Siebler brought him down. They won't give him the first down on the mark. They mark him just outside the 46. He had to go about another half a yard in order to get it. This is what we've been talking about. Brian Siebler playing center field. He's taking the quarterback on the pitch. And he's out there almost every time, really running to the football well today. Well-conceived defensive scheme by Tom Osborne and his coaching staff. Oklahoma people saw that spot and immediately yelled for the change. And they are just short. There he's hot. Really hot, out on the field. He thinks he got a bad mark. Here it is again. Now, this is from the side. Let's see where the ball goes down or where the first hit of the knee or the body, whatever it is, hits the ground. I think Barry's right. I do, too. He got a bad mark. Should have been a first down. And he isn't going to mess around with it, though. He's going to kick the ball away on fourth down and about a foot. May not even have been a foot. Rod Smith, 88. And Dana Brinson, 33, go deep. The punter is Todd Thompson for Oklahoma. No pressure on him. Oh, is that a kick into that win? He got a nice tight spiral on it. It takes an Oklahoma bounce, and the Sooners have killed it a yard away from the goal line. Carl Cavanis down to cover the ball after a 52-yard punt. Did that kid kick that ball 52 yards into that wind? He really spun it. I guess the key to it is to get that nice tight spiral, and he got it. And the Huskers are backed up against the end zone. All over the country, people are learning about the new Nissan 200SX. They're examining the many important design changes on the outside. But more, they're experiencing the one important change on the inside. The new fuel-injected overhead cam V6. It's America's new super coupe. And it's just waiting to change your attitude. The quality and power is 200SX. The name is Nissan. Welcome to the Silver Bullet, home of a cold Coors Light. Hey, Timbo. Yo. Where's Nadine tonight? Hey, probably sitting by the phone waiting for yours truly. Give me a Coors Light, will you, sweet thing? You guys have a little love spot? Nah, man's got to have some space. I gotta show these women whose boss has got a zig when they zag. Hey, I know it's brutal, but a man's <laughs> got to do. But... <laughs> Nadine. Yo. <laughs> oh, she looks miserable. Yeah. No slowing down with the silver bullet tonight.
The New York Jets, Ken O'Brien and company remember their incredible win over the Dolphins earlier this season. Now Miami wants to settle the score. They meet Monday night. The ball has been placed two yards from the Nebraska goal line. So it's first down for the Huskers. Keith Jones, Ken Taylor. In the eye formation behind Taylor. Taylor's going to throw it. Now he breaks clear on the run and gets it out close to a first down. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, that kid has, has got some nerve. Dottie Jones finally ran him down. Taylor is a sophomore out of San Diego. This is a guy who's known stardom. Now is trying to live up to this potential. It's tough when the Bills. They tab you as the greatest quarterback ever at Nebraska. Got those happy feet back there. Set up, didn't see anybody open. Knew he better get out of that end zone. He's smart, too. That also tells you something about uh, Tom Osborne. He's a quiet man in private life and even uh, professionally. But his football teams reflect some daring sometimes. As Ryan makes the tackle on Taylor and the first quarter stats. You see the total yards. You see that both teams now fairly even. Ten yards total offense separates the two. No turnovers, but both clubs had the ball on the ground, recovered their own fumbles, and both times costly for each. Tom Osborne said long drives, and these two teams can play evenly. Nebraska's touchdown drive was 85 yards. Oklahoma's was 70. Second down. About five. Taylor's got it and caught behind the line of scrimmage. He had that little delay fake to Jones, and Richard Reed, forcing from the left side, got him. Third down and six. Ball on the 16 yard line. Boy, look at that. That's good pressure. Just ran around the block, used his quickness, came in and made the play on Taylor. Got him from the side. That's one time where it doesn't matter how strong you are. If you're quick, you can get around the blocker, get in and make the play. At the 16, it is third down and six for the Huskers. 7-7 seven, seven ball game. Taylor, that'll be an incomplete pass. To number 40, Daryl Reed, forcing on the play. Junior out of Cypress, Texas, hit him just as the arm was coming forward, and Nebraska will have to punt, and this time Croker will have the wind at his back. I don't think it was any question about the fact his arm was going forward. He never did see the pressure coming from the backside. See, he goes to throw. He was locked in on the receiver. Patrick Collins deep for Oklahoma. Pressure here and a bad kick and a penalty flag down as the kicker is decked by Liddell Glenn. So you got an obvious roughing the kicker call and Nebraska will keep the ball and have it first down. Boy, Barry's hot again. He thinks he got a hand on it. He thought the, the punt was blocked. They're pulling him back off the sidelines again. You don't think he's in this ball game? Well, let's go back and look at it and see whether or not. If you get if you get a piece of it, you can deck him. Plus, if you're blocked, oh, into, blocked the kicker, into it, if, if you're blocked into the kicker, there is no penalty. And he was obviously blocked into him. Sure, well, he makes contact here. But was he coming blocked at, into it? Yeah, he's coming over, over the, the block. Top. Sure, you don't have to throw him into it, but if there's contact made on the block, you come into the punter. Fourth down. It is not a first down. They penalized him five, which keeps it at fourth and two. Definitely blocked into the punter. Oklahoma would have had the football, what, about the 33, 34 yard line of Nebraska. Instead, Croker now gets another shot at it. Yeah, but I guarantee he's thinking about that last punt. Just like a golfer, you think about that shank. Don't ever bring that word up in my conversation with me, please. <laughs> no pressure this time. It's a low kick. And there will be a return by Dixon. And Dixon comes back to midfield. 37-yard punt. And you're right. I think Croker was thinking about it because he didn't get a lot of it. And with the wind at his back, he had kept the ball down low when, in fact, he needed a high hanger and let the wind help him. 
you have anything in aviation? The Army's most technical training. Are there any openings in communications? Is also the Army's most popular training. I'd really like computers. So it pays to have a reservation. Electronics. If you qualify, you can get a guaranteed reservation for the training you want up to 12 months in advance, even if you're still in high school. All that you can be. We'll see you after graduation. <laughs> Find your futures in the arms. Congratulations. Today's Equitable has new life insurance ideas that can provide money for a secure and comfortable retirement. Today's Equitable, your key to financial opportunity. We have new kinds of insurance that do more than just protect your family. They can help you earn the money for your new home. Today's Equitable, your key to financial opportunity. Our new insurance ideas can do a lot for you. Talk to us. Your key to financial opportunity. Nebraska has the number two ranked defense in the nation, yielding 221 yards per game. But today they're playing the number one ranked offense, Oklahoma. I think that tells you something about how much they enjoy their football in Lincoln, Nebraska. What do they say? Memorial Stadium becomes the second or third largest city. Third. Omaha, in, uh, Lincoln, and Memorial Stadium. On game day in Nebraska. First down, Oklahoma, and they continue to enjoy premium field position in the game. 12 19 to go, first half. Johnson, Collins, and Tillman in the backfield. And the ball is pitched back to the speedy Collins, and he'll pick up about four yards on that carry. Here's Al Trafwick. Keith on the bench right now for Oklahoma, number 40, Daryl Reed. He was hyperventilating a few moments ago. I don't know how long he's going to be on the bench. His chest was bouncing up and down. He's taking some deep uh, breaths of oxygen right now, but Oklahoma will be without him at least for the next few series, I think. Thank you. Round too tight. Second down, long six. All the way. Gets away from one behind the line of scrimmage, and there's a penalty flag. You know what? I think they're going to nail him for a face mask. Absolutely. His hand got caught up there again on Jamel's face mask, and again, it was incidental, but it is a penalty. It didn't hold it, though. I mean, it was just up there, and uh, it didn't seem to deter Holloway particularly, but it's almost an automatic call. I would imagine the, the officials too probably had a had it in mind to make sure they let everybody know who's boss early on in the ball game, which is not a bad idea in a game like this. Tight fit game, long time rivalry. We had a five yard. Face mask on the defense. First down. There's Reed. Now he has put down the oxygen, so apparently he's trying to shake off the hyperventilation that he was suffering a moment ago. Lydell Carr is in a pullback now for Oklahoma. First down for the Sooners, just short of the Nebraska 37 yard line. We have not heard much from Newman lately. Nor Spockman. Holloway gives it back to Keith Jackson, and he is caught by Neil Smith back on the 45-yard line. They wanted to run the reverse with Jackson. He turned it back the other way. And Neil Smith is there. It was a reverse by Jackson that broke the game open last year down in Norman, Oklahoma. He went 88 yards for a touchdown. Not this time. Boy, Neil Smith came back this time. You know, he was the one that had the face mask penalty called on when he went after Holloway. Little stutter step, Smith came right through and made the play. Boy, I'll tell you, as Collins went into motion that time, immediately Nebraska adjusted and dropped back Washington into the strong safety position. Timeout, Oklahoma. I wonder if Roderick Thomas, who was pointing at Keith Jackson, had spotted something that tipped him. Jackson might be involved in the play because Thomas was pointing to him. And sure enough, he was involved in the play. Boy, this is about as well as I've seen a defense prepare. Watch this now. Watch the hands. There it is. There it is. Well, he thought he moved. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think that's what it was. He thought he had moved with intent. But of course, the tight end. He was lobbying already. He looked over <laughs> to the officials and said, come on. Well, he's played a terrific ball game so far today. Ten minutes and 35 seconds to go in the first half. Oklahoma 7 and Nebraska 7. Once upon a time, millions of us roamed the bathrooms of America. We're bull shavers, convinced we had to use shavers with all kinds of expensive extras. But we don't pay an arm and a hoof anymore, because us bull shavers are becoming... Bic shavers. Bic gives us an extraordinary shave at an extraordinary price, without bells or whistles. To pay more makes you, well, bullheaded. Try the Bic for normal or sensitive skin, and you, too, will have a beef. With bull shaving. Introducing the new Nissan Maxima, the only sedan in the world with A-class luxury and Z-class performance. That with the comfort of body-hugging sports seats, power windows and sunroof, three-way adjustable shocks, and the performance of 0 to 55 in 7.5 seconds. The new Nissan Maxima SE, from A to Z in a class by itself. The luxury and performance is Maxima. The name is Nissan. One of college football's biggest rivalries. Mike Shula leads Alabama as they meet their SEC rival, the Auburn Tigers, next Saturday following College Football Today. Oklahoma owns the football, second down at about 18 at the Nebraska 45. Nebraska scored first to lead 7-0 in the first quarter. A two-yard run by Jones, capping the drive. Oklahoma came right back and drove it downfield. Nebraska in 85, and Oklahoma drove it right back down to tie at seven. That's where we are right now. Second down and 18 with Earl Johnson in the wishbone at the fullback position now for Oklahoma. Janelle Holloway passing, and the pass is incomplete, and it's a good defensive play by Brian Davis on Derek Shepard. Brian Davis had just come into the ball game to replace Charles Fryer on that corner. But look at how he reads and reacts to the football. And watch his left hand just strip the ball right out. The catch was already made. Now he pushes it out of there. It's incomplete. And Boy, it's that's third an outstanding down and play. Outstanding play on the corner. Winner goes to the Orange Bowl. Loser goes to the Sugar Bowl. If Oklahoma wins it, they win the Big Eight title. If Nebraska wins it, three teams share first place. Holloway getting pursuit. Munford after him. Trips him up and brings him down back on the Oklahoma side of the field. The senior from Littleton, Colorado who came back from serious reconstruction of a knee. Wouldn't quit and ran him down. I want to tell you something. Talking to the Oklahoma coaches yesterday, they said, we don't think Munford's nearly as fast as he used to be. We don't think he's that much of a factor like he was a couple years ago after reconstruction surgery. Boy, he showed some quickness that time. Don't underestimate a guy that's got a big heart. Todd Thompson to punt. Dana Brinson, Rod Smith deep for Nebraska. Thompson this time doesn't get the ball to spin for him, and it's down by the Sooners at the Nebraska 27-28 yard line. The wind knocked that ball down in a hurry. Only 30 yards. Clouds getting a little heavier. Maybe some snow in the offing, they say, later on over the weekend. There are your top 10 teams and what's happening to them today. Michigan finally beating Ohio State. So the Wolverines uh, were trailing much of that ball game. And Arizona, look at that. Arizona's out 14 nothing second quarter over Arizona State. Arizona State's a Rose Bowl team. Arizona's won that game the last four years. Arizona State will be playing Michigan in Pasadena. 9.44 to go in the first half. Nebraska has Steve Taylor in there at quarterback. He's got the ball, trying to turn it around the corner, and he will wiggle along and get it up to about the 31. He wanted to drop it back to Keith Jones, but Oklahoma had it played so well, he didn't dare try it. Darrell Reed is back in the ball game at defensive end for Oklahoma. There's Reed. Sonny Brown is playing on the open side of the field at the left corner spot. That's a change effected for this ball game. Second down. 
seven as Taylor drops the throw, gets the pass off. The pass is caught by the tight end, number 87, Tom Banderas. And it's good to the 48, just over the 48-yard line. Banderas, a junior out of Oak Grove, Missouri. We saw him work on in this play yesterday when they went through their touch-up drills. It's just a flood to the right side play action. Oklahoma's in a two-deep zone. Banderas works into the seam right there. It's a low pass, puts it through the only place he possibly can. It was low in the seam, and he made the catch. And it's a first down for the Cornhuskers. And it to the fullback, Kalen. And Kalen uh, moves it from the 40th. I think I said the 48. He should have said the 43. He has just moved it for three yards to the 46. The New York Jets at 10 and 1 against the Miami Dolphins 5 and 6. And the Jets really rumbling along on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football this coming Monday. Well, it's second down and seven. Time remaining there. First half of play, 7-7 seven, seven tie. Taylor keeps it, turns it. Out of there. Oh, he's quick. He's got a first down for Nebraska the 34 and a penalty flag goes down as Daryl Reed brings him down and it's going to be called on Bosworth Taylor tucked it away and took it up field put some good juke moves on everybody Bosworth wouldn't take him he stayed at home and made a pretty good lick but the flag went down immediately that's three face mask calls we've had in the game Five-yard face pass penalty on the defense. First down. So now Nebraska manifesting another threat. The ball rests at the Oklahoma 39. Husker scored first. Sooners came right back. Didn't have it. Taylor does. Reads after him. Taylor's pass. Thrown away. Incomplete. In hindsight, he should have given it to Jones. Because they opened the barn door wide. He was roping through there. And if Taylor had had a moment to find him as a pass receiver, he might well have put six points on the board. But it was play action from the start of the play. You can see he never put the hand, the ball there. It's just a hand. Right. You can see him riding Bosworth out of there, actually tackled him. But here is a very good play by Steve Taylor. Now, they said he made a lot of sophomore mistakes this year, but he is a talent. And this time he shows that he has learned over the year by throwing the ball away and not chancing the interception or the loss. And it's second down and ten. Brinson's back in the ball game now at wing back and wide to the right as Taylor goes down the line with it and throws it out of bounds behind hey, Keith right Jones. Here, and that's the third bad down. pitch he has made in the ball game. Jones out of bounds. That's what we have for you at halftime. And that special freshman that Al Troutwig is going to show you. You want to see that because he really is truly is a special kind of a young man. Seven and a half minutes to go in the first half. Third and 11. The ball went out of bounds at the 40. And Taylor coming around. Gets his pass off. The pass good to Snitzler. He was coming back to the ball. Where will they spot it? Looks like a good spot for Nebraska, and it'll be a first down. Oh, it's going to be close. First down, you're right. Snitzler, the experienced receiver now, just drives off Sonny Brown. See him? Looks like it's going to be a fly pattern. Now he stops, plants, and comes back to meet the football. And he did get the first down. a lot of times the receiver it's not so much speed you have as much as it is intelligence and placing and finding the open area and coming back for the football getting rid of the defensive back a lot of your great receivers have had quickness rather than speed first down ball just inside the Oklahoma 29 and Taylor's pass incomplete intended for Rod Smith he had him boy oh, did he ever that's that play you were watching yesterday and likes it. Oh, I really do. He comes out on a reverse pivot and then just drills the ball. It's not 
much you can do. It's a very difficult play to stop. Well, if anybody can stop you, that crowd in white can stop you. 6.52 to go in the first half. Keep in mind, Oklahoma has won five of the last seven games played in Lincoln. Second down and ten for the Huskers. Taylor's pass down the middle is good. Well, that's a heck of a catch by Todd Milliken, and it's good for a first down. He caught it in the arms of Ricky Dixon. Tell you what, it's not bad defensive coverage either. No, Again, sir. it's the play action. They use that to, to hold up the linebacker so they can't get back into their hook zones. Now watch this. Dixon is right there. That's perfect coverage. It's just an outstanding catch by Milliken. Todd, 6'3", 230, sophomore from Shenandoah, Iowa. And the ball comes to the Oklahoma 16, where the Huskers have a first down. Keith Jones. Number 10, David Vickers, and a penalty flag back inside the 10. That oftentimes means holding. Oklahoma man shaking on the play. Vickers. Vickers really laid a lick on Keith Jones. You could hear the collision all the way up here. Keith Jones did a great job just to get loose, get around the corner, used his 4-3 speed. There's the contact made. And Vickers also came down on his shoulder. Now we'll get the definition of the penalty flag. With the penalty flag on the play. Nope. It's on Nebraska. Chuck Block. David will come out, but he looks to be all right now. He was named the Big 8 Player of the Week a couple of weeks ago for his defensive play. Came to Oklahoma as a quarterback. That penalty hurts Nebraska, blocking below the waist, moves him back. They had a good drive going, We're utilizing the clock quite well, too. We have blocking below the waist on the offense. Still first down. But now the ball is resting just short of the 31 yard line. Oh, they need 25. First and 25. Give the ball to Brinson, the wing back. They have put Jones in motion with Brinson lined up in the flanker spot or the wing back spot. He delayed for a moment and they tried to trap up the middle and didn't work for much. They got the ball just inside the 29. Vaughn Shepard and Dana Brinson now seem to be the messengers for Tom Osborne as Shepard is back in. Shepard is the bigger of the two wingbacks, but not quite as fast as Brinson. Taylor gets it away into the end zone, too deep. Thrown beyond the field of play with Shepard. Running right under the goal post, covered by Ricky Dixon. Third down. Steve Taylor's taking quite a beating back there. Watch him now. He gets in. He's got Von Shepard in his eyesight. But here comes Johnson, and Johnson throws him down pretty good. At least gets his attention so that Taylor will be thinking about him next time he goes back to pass. Tom Osborne promised he passed a little bit more, and he has. Yep. It's third down now at about 22. 5.28 to play in the second quarter. Seven, seven times. Taylor's throwing again. Goes underneath with it. The pass is caught. It'll be well short of the first down, obviously, because they had to go to the six to get it. Dana Brinson, the wingback, coming underneath, makes the catch inside the 15-yard line. And now 
the kicking team will come on for Nebraska as the Huskers try to take the lead. So Dale Klein comes in with the kicking tee and will put the tee down at the 22-yard line. It'll be a 32-yard field goal try. The wind is at his back. On the year, he's three out of three from this distance. Cleet Blakeman holds. The snap is good. The hold is good. The kick is away. And the kick is good. And the Huskers go back into the lead. 10 to 7 with 4 minutes and 46 seconds to play in the first half. Billy D. Williams on body language. You know, body language tells you a lot about what a person's thinking. For instance, that means she has an interest in the finer things in life. That means she also wants a little fun in her life, but only with the right man. And now she's pouring a Colt 45. And we all know what that means. You mind if I join you? You must have read my mind. Something like that. The power of Colt 45, it works every time. So the issue is clear. Sony Video 8, the system of the future, or VHSC, the compromise of the past. Now, as we've seen, the new Sony Handycam with autofocus and zoom gives you a measurably better picture, far superior sound, twice the recording time, and on Sony video cassettes, your memories are safe. While on VHSC, they could be fleeting. I rest my case. The Sony Video 8 system. Judge for yourself. What a job, what a job he did here, huh? He's still here, of course, as athletic director. All right, Nebraska leading 10 to 7. We'll kick it off. Derek Shepard and Earl Johnson deep for the Sooners. Oklahoma operating into a brisk win once they possess the ball. well back into the end zone and will not be returned. It'll be Oklahoma first down at the 20. Let's check in with Al. And uh, David Vickers, who was helped off the field a few minutes ago for Oklahoma. He has a pinched nerve in his neck. The doctor is rubbing it a little bit, but he told me a minute ago that it's no big deal. We could see him back again. His arm went numb for a second, then it's uh, the feeling came back in it. Back to you. Thank you. Holloway comes out at quarterback. And You've got Perry, Carr, and Stafford. And this is Oklahoma's worst field position of the ball game, and Holloway is being shirt tailed behind the line of scrimmage and brought down. It's Tony Holloway, number 91. They've got a hold of him. Perry is in agony. He says, what is going on here? I'll tell you what's going on. This Nebraska team is running to the football as well as anybody I've seen. Look at 91. That's Holloway. Holloway gets back to the quarterback immediately. Gat has his jersey, and Jamel really tried to pull away. Did a nice job, but Holloway stayed right there and pulled him to the ground. Second down, 11 for the Sooners. Jamel goes the other way, pitches it off to Stafford. Anthony Stafford, who is an ultimate speedster, he is run down by Brian Siebler. The Oklahoma rushing, the last four rushes for them, has been minus eight, minus 12, minus one, and that one was positive five yards. And this is the number one team in total offense, the number one rushing team. They've got John Custer, 5'9, 175 pound sophomore, number 28 now, is playing the right corner. He's got to come out here and play Derek Shepard. 
Oklahoma comes this way, but they give the ball to Liddell Carr. And Carr is tracked down by Leroy Etienne from New Iberia, Louisiana. So right now, the Sooner offense being stymied by the Nebraska defense. 56 yards rushing today for Oklahoma. That's all. 26 carries. Todd Thompson to punt it for the Sooners. Gets it out of there. And coming up is Rod Smith on a fair catch call up around the 42-yard line for Nebraska. With two minutes and 55 seconds, 31-yard punt. The Cornhuskers will have the ball, good field position. And the wind at their back. And first down. And leading 10 to 7. I feel like I'm at a political convention looking at all these posters. <laughs> yeah, you do, don't you? <laughs> all right, Taylor sets him up in the eye with Jones deep. Gives it to Keith. Not a particularly good pitch there either, and he's going to lose a yard on the play as Sonny Brown played it well. The thing that surprises me thus far is the way that Nebraska has been effective offensively on so many things, but the bread and butter that they've had for years, that option on the corner, has really not worked well all day. They've had a bad pitch virtually every time. Yep. Well, part of it is uh, what you called happy feet. <laughs> Those big guys in white uniforms will make you think about yeah, it. That's coming. right. They do put some nerves in your toes, don't they? Second down and 12. Taylor <laughs> won't get it. Oh, he does get it away. And you know what? It's caught. It's deflected by a defensive player. And that makes the center, Mark Cooper, eligible. And I'm sure that's got to be Cooper's first reception ever. The center. Well, again, Taylor with the play action. Now watch. He feels the pressure coming, but still tries to keep his head up and look for a receiver. Finally throws, doesn't have enough on it. It's tipped, and there he is, 54, Cooper, the center. First collegiate reception. Way to go, Mark. Something he'll remember for quite a while. <laughs> Tell his kids about the pass he caught against Oklahoma. That big Steve Bryan, number 86, was the man that messed up the play. Defensive tackle for the Sooners. Taylor back. Brian after him again. The pass is away. The man is open and doesn't make the catch. It is Rob Schnitzler. And he was all by himself. And he should have caught that ball. Everything Taylor could do. Hangs in the pocket as long as he can. He waits for the hitch and go move by Schnitzler. Schlitzer's wide open, has five yards on the defender. Here's the ball, and he does have to make it. We said time and time again, when the ball's on your hands, you have to make the catch. He should have had it. You win big games by making big plays. We saw one get away last week, the Notre Dame-Penn State game in the end zone. This is Dale Klein punting. Gets some pressure and Cole shanks it out of bounds, but didn't go out of bounds. Stayed in and took a Nebraska bounce. And that's the sorriest looking punt I've ever seen in my life that went that far. It hit right on the nose and started rolling. So Klein looked like he had shanked it in the cheap seats. Instead wound up with a fairly decent punt out of it. 37 yards. These people here are starting to believe. Upset. 106 to play. Oklahoma gets the ball back and they go to work just outside the 22. And it's Jamel Holloway. Holloway's, uh, they list him at 5'10, but I don't believe it. I think he's more like 5'9, but he's put together all right. He's going to weigh in around 180 pounds. And he played his football down in a Southern California area. The Carson Banning went over there at Banning High School. And I tell you, there are no gimmies in that neighborhood. You play tough high school football. Oh, what a lick oh. that was on Patrick Collins by Lee Jones. The famous players defensively, uh, Tim, for Nebraska, have been pretty quiet. 
Spockman and Noonan, but it's been Neil Smith and Lee Jones that have just been tearing them up. Well, I tell you, that's a great hit by Lee Jones. He did everything right. Had all the leverage and the power explode through his legs, through the body. Going to let the clock run out, and they'll go to the clubhouse with the University of Nebraska leading the University of Oklahoma by a score of 10-7. to 7. In this, their 67th meeting. Who says you can't have 100% imported hops and a less filling beer? Old world aging and a less filling beer. Smooth, super premium taste and a less filling beer. Michelob Light, the best of both worlds. Michelob Light, oh yes you can. Have it all. Great deal, but you know the manufacturer's warranty is just 90 days. May I suggest this dandy little service contract? When you buy most TVs, you pay a lot extra for a service contract. But at Curtis Mathis Home Entertainment Centers, there's no additional charge for our exclusive four-year warranty on parts and labor. You see, our terrific audio... Right now. A special feature about a special person. We join Al Trotwick. <laughs> Kenny Walker of Crane, Texas, wears number 49 on Nebraska. I personally hope that I'm there when Kenny Walker steps onto the field and starts for the Huskers for the first time, and I can see the gleam in the coaches and his eyes. We're getting set for the second half. It's been an exciting game so far. We'll be back on ABC Sports coverage of CFA College Football in a moment. Klein will kick off. Derek Shepard and Earl Johnson deep for the Oklahoma Sooners. In the fourth quarter, Oklahoma will have the win. Nebraska has the win, and it's back now here in the third quarter. And that's important. Klein's kick will be returned. Maybe. It's bobbled by Earl Johnson. And he gets it back just over the 15. 49 there. That's Kenny Walker. 94. Where would he go? There he is. 94. A young man that they had the feature about a while ago. Love those kind of stories, don't you? Here comes Oklahoma now. Jamel Holloway comes out at quarterback. Patrick Collins, Earl Johnson, and Spencer Tillman will be in the backfield. The wishbone, Derek Shepard, is your split in. And Keith Jackson is the tight end. Over the ball, big Travis Simpson will snap it, give it to Holloway. Holloway turns and gives it back to Patrick Collins, and the Huskers eat him up, and there's a penalty flag. It's going to be interesting to see what adjustments Oklahoma made at halftime because things have really changed here. Tom Osborne came in and changed his defensive scheme a little bit, special defense for Oklahoma. Let's see if they did adjust. I think it should be noted that Tom Osborne's teams have never in his reign held OU to less than 14 points. It's against the Sooners. We got dead ball, illegal procedure on the offense, still first down. Passing yards. First and 15. Look at this, Keith. Two running teams. They were running the ball almost the entire first half, but it was ironically the pass that set up the two touchdowns. Nebraska has the lead with 98 yards passing. Holloway coming this way. Caught and dragged down back near the 11 yard line by Tony Holloway. Second time today, Holloway has made that play. Well, I'll tell you, his dance card has been full all afternoon. He pursues well. Watch this now. Just keep an eye on number 91. He meets the block, finds out where the ball is going. Now he'll shed the block, and now he'll use his speed to find Jamel Holloway and pull him down. It's not easy to bring Holloway down with a hand, but he did. Well, he's got that good, strong upper body strength. He's only 205 pounds, but most of that is from the waist up. They need about 15 yards, 16 yards. On second down, Holloway gets it around the corner and comes up to the 21 where Charles Fryer brings him down. Just starting the third quarter of play. Both touchdowns were scored in the first quarter after long drives. The field goal was a 32-yarder to give Nebraska the lead, and we're at 10-7. Colorado 
incidentally, has been invited to and accepted the invitation to the Blue Bonnet Bowl. Oh, the Buffaloes are going bowling. Our congratulations to them. And to Bo Schembechler and the Michigan Wolverines for their win today, which puts them in the Rose Bowl. Ohio State goes to the Cotton Bowl. On third down and long, Holloway back. Gets it in the air. Jackson going downfield. Penalty flag. They're going to call interference against Brian Siebler. Siebler is the guy that's been playing center field. He runs through the football on the option. Because it's a play action, you can see him here. He starts to come up to the line, now stops and says, whoops, here comes Keith Jackson. So now he runs with him. He's got good position right here, but he's not as fast as Jackson. And here's the contact. He's still running with him. I'm not sure Keith didn't put that right hand on him and push back, but it was it was, it was was contact made, and they called it, and Siebler didn't like it naturally. Well, face, face guarding and all kinds of stuff involved in that decision. Though. All right, let's clarify it, though. If he had to look back for the football, then there is no foul. But he, he looked never back. looked back for the football. If Siebler looks back for the ball, there's no Pass foul. Pass interference on the defense. First down. I agree with that. Now, I was strictly talking about the contact, not yeah. questioning the foul, because he never did look back for the football. Right. Ball comes out to the 35-yard line, where it's first down for the Sooners. Holloway gives it inside. And the ball, I think, was loose and recovered. Earl Johnson had it. And he keeps it. Well, I want to tell you something, Tim. The big fellas down in the trenches are knocking each other around. Woo! I've been having fun watching Noonan. Noonan bench presses 500 pounds. They say he's the best they've ever had in Nebraska at that middle guard position. And that includes Tony Casillas. So he's in some pretty good company. But boy, I'll tell you, he's up there. He's meeting the block. He's just throwing them around, and he's making lots of the tackles. Second down and eight for the Sooners. Holloway gives it off to the big man. And Johnson, 205-pound fullback, is out to about the 40. And Al Troutwig is with a big man downstairs. Big Charlie Kerfield. Hey, Charlie. Big enough to get seats in the front row, Keith. Charlie, what brings you to the game? Uh, this game seems boss. Check him out. He seems really hot. They, they gave... Uh... I think was loose and recovered. Earl Johnson had it, and he keeps it. Well, I want to tell you something, Tim. The big fellas down in the trenches are knocking each other around. Woo! I've been having fun watching Noonan. Noonan bench presses 500 pounds. They say he's the best they've ever had in Nebraska at that middle guard position, and that includes Tony Casillas. So he's in some pretty good company. But boy, I'll tell you, he's up there. He's meeting the block. He's just throwing them around, and he's making lots of the tackles. Second down and eight for the Sooners. Holloway gives it off to the big man. And Johnson, 205-pound fullback, is out to about the 40. And Al Troutwig is with a big man downstairs. Big Charlie Kerfield. Hey, Charlie. Big enough to get seats in the front row, Keith. Charlie, what brings you to the game? Uh, this game seems boss. Check him out. He seems really hot. They, they, gave, uh, they gave him an early lead, but watch Nebraska. Come, uh, Oklahoma will come back, and the boss will deal on him. Watch. All right, Charlie, thanks. By the way, Keith, uh, the, Charlie describes himself as outlandish. Can you imagine McMahon, Kerfeld, and the Boz on the same team? Back to you. Loss on the play by Kevin Parsons as he fought his way through traffic and got Holloway. The footnote, Charlie Kerfeld, and the, the people you mentioned, Al, I don't want to be in the same town with them. <laughs> they are, they have fun. But uh, and I'll tell you, that big fella can bring that baseball to the plate. So the Nebraska defense, playing inspired football today, will force the Oklahoma punt, and Thompson will have to punt into the win. Got a little pressure on him, and he's got a pretty good kick away. And this is Brinson looking for some help, and gets it around the corner. One man, the punter, that's all. And he got it. Thompson brought him down at the Oklahoma 28. talking about a man with 
4-3-5 speed. He had meningitis his first year here, was red-shirted. But boy, look at he can fly. He waited for his block. Now he tries to hold up here and waits for Tom Jack, number 11, to throw a block, but then says, wait a minute, I can't wait any longer. I've got to explode. And he gets tackled. But watch this. First he gets control of the football. Then he jiggered, juggle steps right there, gives a little juke, picks up some blocking, comes up the sidelines, waits for Tom Jack, and then cuts to the outside. 38-yard punt, 49-yard return. First down, Nebraska, Oklahoma, 28. Taylor turns up to the 25. Three-yard pickup, Troy Johnson brought him down. The flags are just standing straight out, stiff now with the wind. There they are. ABC Sports flags in pretty good company there, isn't it? It sure is. Second down and seven. Taylor still got it. Pass down the middle. It is good. Touchdown, Smith. in serious trouble. It's not a come-from-behind team. Taylor, in the pocket. No happy feet that time. He just planted those babies in the mud. Set, planted, fired the ball, and it was a perfect strike to Smith. The reaction of the quarterback when he saw the pass fall in for the touchdown. And now Klein out of Blakeman's hole. they try to make it a 10-point lead. Snap is bobble. Blakeman running around with it. Penalty flags all over the field. Blakeman's a quarterback. Throws and caught by Kalen, the fullback, but short of the end zone. And that could be a mistake that will haunt the Cornhuskers. They're calling the team back on the field. One of the flags is against Oklahoma. How about that? So the Cornhuskers are literally lulling in luck right now. See if you can see it. There it is right there. He jumped the right hand of your screen. Came across too quickly. Oh, what a break that is for Nebraska. My goodness. Hey, encroachment on the defense. Don't try for point. Looked like Richard Reed, the tackle. So the Cornhuskers having a good roll of luck right now. Get a second try at the extra point. That snap wasn't all that good either. But the hold was, and the kick is down the middle. And it's now a 17-7 ball game. Nebraska leads Oklahoma. As Nebraska has gone to a 10-point lead of this possession, and it was set up by Brinson's 49-yard uh, punt return. And the pass from Taylor to Smith for the touchdown. And now Klein will kick off with Shepard and Johnson deep for Oklahoma. A little better kick this time, about five yards deep in the end zone, and they will not return it. This is the touchdown play again. Watch the sophomore. This is the first sophomore quarterback in Tom Osborne's 14 years to come out of spring practice and start the season. And he just drilled the ball, perfectly thrown. And Smith, of course, had the, the defensive man beaten by four yards. Jamel Holloway comes out at quarterback for the Sooners. Keep in mind, this is a wishbone team, and Oklahoma admittedly is not a come-from-behind team. Not that they've have ever had to that often, but it hurt them against Miami. Lydell Carr is the fullback. Collins and Tillman, the halfbacks, behind Holloway out of the wishbone. Holloway flips it outside, and they break it outside with Collins carrying. And get the ball up to the 26-yard line. Munford and Siebler defensively for Nebraska. The beauty of the triple option, the wishbone attack, is that the defense has to read it as being equal to either side. You can't tell which side the play is going to go to. 
They have one wide out, which makes the, the pass dangerous. But this has been a marvelous defensive scheme by Nebraska with one deep, everybody else loaded up, everybody has an assignment. The down linemen are taking the, the fullback. Siebler's taking the quarterback, and the halfback and the defensive end on that side are taking the pitch man. Number 99 is the player down. That's Neil Smith, who's played a big ball game for Nebraska. He was involved in the pursuit and was shaken up on the play. Let's go. When I was in school, we practiced without the football. And the reason being is Makes you don't sense. care where the football is going. You have to carry out your assignment regardless. Because one breakdown, it'll cost you. Sam Moffis, the referee, defining the offside penalty against Nebraska. And that will give Oklahoma its first down. Defensive end, Thomas, Roderick Thomas, trying to anticipate, got there too soon. On the defense, With first eight down. First downs of the ball game. Four of those eight first downs have come from penalties. Nebraska can't let up, though. They can't go into a traditional third quarter lull as nope. so many teams go into. They can't let down at all. 17 7 is not that big of a lead right now, especially against a team like Oklahoma. Although Oklahoma, and we've made this point, we don't want to overemphasize it, but it is a team that has a tough time coming from behind just by their offensive scheme. Nebraska leading 17 to 7 right now in the third quarter. Holloway delivers the ball back to Collins, and Collins, with that great speed and quickness, looked like he was in a negative position and gets a little bit out of nothing. Holloway was out there with Charles Fryer, and they were not about to let him get around the corner. But he did pick up a couple of yards. Second down and seven. And well, he turned negative yard yardage into positive yep. yardage. He's the fastest back in the Oklahoma squad. He's a big play guy. On the option, the counter option in the sweep, Collins hits that corner as well as anybody I've seen. He glides at warp speed, makes cuts without even slowing down. He's picked up 24 yards in the ball game so far today. 37 yard line, second down. Up man, fullback, car, big and strong, and he'll have a first down as he gets close to the 46 yard line. And big wins right there by Michigan. Arkansas won big, winning big. Keith, we've seen one of the adjustments Oklahoma has made. Now they break that bone. They line up in the in the, yep. the true wishbone, but then they're sending the halfback in in motion, and they're doing that. They're running the uh, the strong safety out of the play a little bit. Call it the 45. Make it first down for the Sooners. They break the bone again. Holloway. Rolls it out to the right, gets his pass off down the middle for Jackson, and this time Keith has drawn a crowd. Brian Siebler and Brian Washington were both there. Washington, the big man in the secondary at 6'1, 220, and has good speed. He's number five. But it's like a chess game right now between these two teams, these two coaches. Oklahoma broke the bones. They've been setting the man in motion. So Nebraska is adjusting by, instead of Siebler being the lone back, the center fielder, he now moves over. Brian Washington moves back, and now you've got a two-deep zone. And it's second and ten for the center. It's Carr again. And the big fullback is going to have about seven yards on the carry before Siebler brings him down. Here's Al Trothwick. Keith, this week's best seat in the house, section six, row six, seat 19, for the entire season, only $42. And you know how I know that this is the best seat in the house? Because this guy told me so. It's my first banner. It's kind of exciting. <laughs> They're gentle. I don't see Al anymore. <laughs> Send in the guards. Third and three for Oklahoma. Holloway caught from behind by Danny Noonan, the middle guard. Two hundred and eighty pounder catches Jamel Holloway and brings him down forcing the punt to left your screen. He was never touched that time. He used his quickness went around the block and caught him from behind. 
Now there's a man that bench presses 500 pounds and runs about a 4840. Todd Thompson will punt it for the Sooners. Brinson and Smith a deep. Brinson broke a big one the last time. Not a good kick. But it takes a good roll. Better put it. Oh my gosh, he got to catch the ball. Uh, he didn't. Did he possess it? No, he did not. It'll come out to the 20. Kevin Atkins downfield could not possess the ball and stop his momentum. He lost it in the end zone. And instead of having it back on the two, Nebraska has it at the 20. A simple career war out here, isn't it? Yeah. No place. now leading 17-7 with six minutes and 46 seconds to play in the third quarter and the Sooners have one two three four five up front as Taylor keeps it spins inside for a couple of yards Brian Bosworth was the man who had a hold of it the conversation or the guessing seems to be that Bosworth will opt for the pro draft and pass up his uh, final year at Oklahoma. He graduates this spring. He's a good student. Well, other than the price of oil, that's the biggest concern in Oklahoma right now. He's a redshirt junior, and his class will graduate. So he's eligible. And I feel certain he'll go. Second down, short eight. Taylor, back to throw it. Goes deep with it. And it is incomplete, intended for Todd Milliken, the tight end. How many times do you see a tight end on a fly pattern? He was lumbering down there, too. Nebraska's getting bold in its attempt, though. It's going long. It's mixing things up. It's got uh, Oklahoma playing a little bit off balance now. The Nebraska defensive people are winning the battle right now. They have really played well. Oklahoma found a couple of cracks in that last possession with the fullback, though. It's third down, short eight, long seven. Run it. Taylor's wide open and a penalty flag. And Taylor has the first down. He had four acres of green space in front of him. And let's see about this flag. Came from the back judge way downfield. Has something to do with the defenders in the secondary and the receivers. Well, you I know the coaches on one side, Keith, were yelling to him, run it, run it. And the coaches on the other side were saying, look out. It's holding against Oklahoma in the secondary. So they're better off with the play. It'll give them a first down up around the 32-yard line. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. They tacked on 10. Tagged it on at the end of the play. Holding on the defense. First down. <laughs> well, that becomes a big penalty. I don't understand why they tagged it on at the end either. <laughs> I thought it was a dead ball foul, but holding can't be a dead ball foul. No, it can't. 42-yard line. Taylor hands it off. Here comes Prince on the wing back. Good block on the corner, but too many defenders there. Number 72 was out in front of him trying to give him some help, Rob Maggard. And he did help him for about uh, four yards, and that was all. The Scott Garl and company came across to get him. Oklahoma is starting to batten down the hatches now defensively. They're getting some good outside pressure coming in on on the outside of that Nebraska offense, the inside backers are staying at home, and the pass coverage has been quite good. Second down, six. This is Kalen, the fullback. And he's close to midfield. Kept up by number 98, Williams. Time remaining, third quarter, 5.35. Nebraska leading, 17-7. One of the keys to Nebraska's success is that they've stayed away on first down from the short stops. In other words, they're coming up with second and four, second and three, rather than second and eight, second and nine. So it's right here, third down and close to three. Up two and a half. Taylor kept it. Dives for the marker, and he'll have his first down at the Oklahoma 47. Al Traffic. 
Can you define why that penalty was tacked off? Well, I'll give it a whirl, Keith. Evidently on a running play, when a penalty occurs over the line of scrimmage, you get an additional five yards from where the run ends. On a pass play, of course, it goes back to the line of scrimmage. That's what I was just told. Okay. Possessing the ball here in the third quarter, leading by 10. Oklahoma has the wind at its back in the fourth quarter. Here comes the reverse as Rod Smith is caught and thrown down way back behind the line of scrimmage. Back on the Nebraska 43-yard line by Richard Reed. I can tell you right now, this is a play that was designed on the reverse to be thrown. Yes, he intended to throw it. Right now, he's looking to throw it. Von Shepard, number two, is down the field. He's covered, though, so now he tucks it away. There's good pressure. Again, we just talked about the outside contained people of Oklahoma doing a much better job. You can see they shut that play down. They stayed outside. They slowed it down. They strung it out, and the play was made by Reed. And the loss is from the Oklahoma 47 back to the Nebraska 43. Second down and 20. Nebraska. And timeout. Called by Nebraska. 3.59 to go in the third quarter. Your life is changing. And right, as the head coach of the Cornhuskers, if Bob Devaney should decide to retire, Bob now in his 70s, but you see Devaney out here running the steps. He doesn't look like he's ready to quit, does he? Second down and 20 now. Nebraska calling the timeout to sort out their offense. There's that little spin that looks shot thrown over to the wing back. And Vaughn Shepard this time pulls it in, but he made the catch with the knee on the ground. And it'll be third down and short. Third down and long. Third down and a taxi yeah, you're ride. Right. Yeah, right. It's third down. I'm looking at the other end of the marker it's third down and 14. That's right it's third down and short to get to the <laughs> to the original, the original line, line of scrimmage. Scrimmage. Yeah. but it's a taxi ride for a first it's down. hard to see uh, buried in all that red across the way too. Taylor pressure from behind intercepted by Donnie Jones at Oklahoma makes a break there's a penalty flag thrown just before the pass was thrown there's a penalty flag thrown after the interception I think the first flag is holding Nebraska and then I suspect the second flag is a clip Oklahoma or blocking below the waist or pushing or something such thing there's your holding call against Nebraska there's your clipping call against Oklahoma. The Sooners will get the ball. Well, a lot of pressure coming from the backside on Taylor now. You'll see him. He gets back here and he plants. Again, as Peter, good, solid plant. He's looking for his receiver. Here comes the pressure on the backside. He can feel it. Releases a little bit early and low. And there's Dante Jones. Goes up because the ball was low. Had a chance to tip it and get it back himself. There's the clip, too. Mm-hmm. Could have been a spear, too. Did you see somebody come in there with their head using it as a weapon? That one wasn't called. The ball will come back to the Sooners, 29. Sam Muffins. We got holding on the offense. Richard Reese moves. The interception stands. Pays 15 yards for clipping. First down. Sooners ball. Three minutes and 13 seconds to go in the third quarter with Lydell Carr, Patrick Collins, and Spencer Tillman in the backfield. Last time the Sooners had the ball now, they found some daylight for the fullback, Carr. By sending the man in motion and running the safety out. That was incidentally the first turnover in the ball game. Outside, good block on the corner. Collins run down. Up around the 32. That's good Siebler, defensive flow Parsons, by Siebler, Washington. Parsons, and Washington. But there was a pretty good block out here on the corner by Spencer Tillman. Tillman's been quiet today. He's carried the ball one time. 
and gain one yard. Second down and seven for the Sooners. Holloway. Z36 and Siebler nailed him. He's carrying a heavy burden on his shoulders today because that's a major assignment. He's got outside on this now from the center field position. This time they stay in the true wishbone. Reverse pivot, they come down the line, and here comes Siebler. Remember, he's starting from about 12 yards back. There he is. Now watch him. Just run to the football right now. Here it comes. He's got outside containment. He wants to get to the quarterback and makes the hit on Holloway. Stafford is in the backfield on third down. About three and a half. Holloway keeps it, turns it, and gets the first down. He's strong. He's across the 40 to about the 41. 143 to go in the third quarter. Holloway's biggest improvements has taken over the quarterback position from Troy Aikman in the fourth game last season is his ability to change plays and his overall understanding of the offense. He made that play that time by cutting back against the defensive pursuit. Holloway throwing on first down. Puts it in the air. Shepard pushes the defender. Shepard pushed the defender. Charles Fryer in the back. Can you believe they didn't call that? And the official is standing right there looking at it. He went, couldn't have been looking at him, but he was standing there. Had to be looking at him. There's the official right in the middle of the bottom of the screen. Here comes the push. Now watch this. Boom. Pushes him right out of the way, and the official's looking right at him. No flag. Nebraska man hurt on the play is number 91. That's Tony Holloway. That's a heavy loss. He's the defensive right in for the Cornhuskers. Senior out of Bellevue, Nebraska, timeout for him. What happens to number 91 here? It's a whack on the knee, but he did get up and walk off the field, and he walked off with some vigor, so apparently it's not too serious. And now they're having a look at the knee to see if he's all right. Brad Tyler comes in, replacing him at defensive end. Tony says, I'm all right. Adrenaline's pumping. I walk back out there. <laughs> 41 yard line for Oklahoma. It's second down and 10. Spencer Tillman is back in the lineup, and Collins goes in motion. And Holloway throws down the middle, intercepted by Mark Munford, intended for Keith Jackson. And the Cornhuskers have the football on the Oklahoma 39. receiver and goes up and makes the interception and the Huskers call it the 40s where they attack from Keith Jones carries and Jones loses the football and Oklahoma recovers it at the 35 Scott Durrell on the ball so the Huskers give it right back effort somebody came in and put a hat on it and the ball came popping out Carl was there to cover it for the Sooners so many times you see the second effort cause the fumble the reason for that is now they tighten their body they tense everything up and they take the pressure off their arms where the football is he also was stripped nicely by Carl put a hand on the football and Earl Johnson slams over the right side and finds some daylight and on two spins Johnson takes it to the 48 and picks up a first down of about 13 yards. And so the air went out of Nebraska's balloon for just a moment here, and Oklahoma trying to strike quickly. 
fullback gained about 250 yards against Kansas, the game we did. This is the same kind of play, straight up the middle with power. Holloway still got it. And turns it to the 46 of Nebraska. That will be a six, close to seven yard pickup where Charles Fryer brought him down. You talked about the momentum being with Nebraska. You can feel it now, just sli slightly swinging back to Oklahoma. And the Sooners will have the win in the fourth quarter. I keep saying that because it could very well be a factor. This is Johnson, the fullback. He's got two of the four yards. It'll be third and two. Kevin Parsons, the hit for the Huskers. The truly great teams play best in the fourth quarter. So we've got 15 minutes to play. Nebraska, 17, Oklahoma, seven. Two turnovers. This is the last one. But look at Bosworth's left hand. Look what we found. It's right on the face mask of Keith Jones as Garl strips the ball away. Boy, that's double teaming. Bosworth takes him high, Garl takes the ball, and Oklahoma has the football. Where was the flag? None. <laughs> there we go. Oklahoma, third down, about two. Just inside the Nebraska 44-yard line. Did he or did he? Where's the mark? Close. Wait for the mark. One man has got him marked just inside the 43. Looks like the other mark where the ball was unpiled is a little closer perhaps to the first down. They'll bring the change, and while the change come, let's look at the third quarter stats. Oklahoma improved his rushing yard. It's 137 yards to 70 for Nebraska, but we said at the top of the show, to win, Nebraska had to pass, and look at the passing statistics. 130 yards for Nebraska, just 29 for Oklahoma. It needs almost a yard. There have been three turnovers in the game, and all three have come in the last three minutes. So it is fourth down, and not quite a yard. Oklahoma will go. They trail by 10. Johnson is in at fullback, replacing Lydell Carr. Tillman and Perry with Johnson. Holloway says he can't hear. Referee gives him a, gives him a favorable call there. Sam saying, go up there, simplify your call, but put the ball in play, because the longer you fiddle around doing this, the louder it's going to get. And that fellow with that pulling that airplane uh, banner is, uh, is going commercial on us now. It's, it's, Sentiments out of there for just a minute. Maybe that's a different one. Tony Holloway is back in on fourth down and about a yard. And Holloway's looking around, and the referee is standing back there with his arms folded. And time. He got the first down, but uh, the 25 second clock clearly showed zero. It wasn't working. It never started. Never started? Maybe it hasn't worked because it was working a while ago. But he got the first down that time. Lydell Carr came back in, replacing uh, Johnson, and he's got it. Time out for measurement. I uh, shouldn't say so definitively he got it, but it looked like he did. Twenty-five second clock. Keith was never in motion. Never, never reset. He got once it by a, half a ball. Once a quarterback walks away because of noise, they don't reset it. They turn it off. That's a first down. That clock should reset. Now. There it is. Ball at the forty-two of Nebraska. Nebraska leading the Sooners by ten points. 14 minutes and 10 seconds to play in the ballgame. 
Collins is back in the backfield. Holloway keeps it. He's caught and dragged down. Penalty flag. You're going to get another face mask call. Just assures the world on Ryan Davis. Well, our replays have shown the other ones, and they showed that there was a hand on the face mask. This one, from up here, on the first glance, it didn't look like there was. Ryan Davis is not arguing, however. I think he had a hold of it. Well, here's 32. See him in the right hand of your screen. Now, here comes the play down the line of scrimmage. Fake to the fullback. Davis comes up now. Eludes the block. Yep, face mask. Right hand is right on it. They had Holloway for about a three-yard loss back to the 45. So it's going to amount to about an eight-yard penalty. Face mask, face mask on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. That's seven penalties now for 65 yards against Nebraska. First and five for the Sooners, 37 of Nebraska. Lydell Carr goes up the middle, breaks it big, goes to the 25. Brian Washington brought him down. So Oklahoma now beginning to find more and more daylight for their fullback. They're becoming more authoritative, too. You're watching the Sooners. They lead the nation in scoring, total offense, rushing offense. Taking command in that offensive line now. Stafford is in the backfield. Fullback Johnson this time carries as Carr had come off. Goes to the 21. Picked up four yards. It'll be second down and six. 13-20 to play in the ball game. Second down and six. Oklahoma ranked third starting the day. Nebraska ranked fifth. Playing for the Big Eight Championship on the side of Oklahoma. They, if they win, they win outright. If Nebraska wins, three teams share it. The Huskers, the Sooners, and Colorado. Second down, six. Holloway. Pure speed got him by the first man. And then he had enough momentum to carry the second man. And he picks up the first down inside the 15-yard line. It was Brian Siebler again. He got there late, and then he couldn't stop Holloway. Once you get behind him, He's like a runaway locomotive. Here comes Siebler now, 19. See him? Gets there a little bit late. He's a step behind Holloway. Now, Holloway is running full tilt ahead. So Siebler has to drop down and try to trip him up by the ankles. The ball is at the 13-yard line of Nebraska. First down for the Sooners. Fullback, Johnson. Give him two to the 11. Higher. Short yardage defense now for Nebraska. Nebraska this afternoon has been like a rubber band. It would stretch, it wouldn't break. It gave up the one touchdown and then it battened down the hatches. It's been tough all afternoon. But now at the 11, they're going to have to go into a short yardage. Johnson out, Carr in at fullback. Gets to the nine, pick up of two yards where Kevin Parsons was the first Cornhusker to get to it. Third down. Oklahoma will have to move the ball past the three yard marker to get their first down. So the fullbacks are going back and forth. Johnson and Carr, and it's Johnson in there now. On third and seven. It's Johnson to the five. And wrestled down at the five, and Earl Johnson almost popped into the end zone. They need ten. This will bring up fourth down. Now what do you do? Do you go for the field goal here and get it, and come back for the touchdown later? I think you almost have to. Take what you can get, I think, don't you? But you've got a lot of time. You've got 11 minutes to play. Absolutely. Got to go for it. Tim Lasher is out there. It'll be a 22-yard try. Sullivan to hold it. And Kevin Atkins to snap it. Wind at their back.
And he drilled it. So at 10-39, the play in the football game it is now a seven-point difference. 17-10, Nebraska. Huskers will work into the wind on this possession. Thompson knocks it through the end zone. No return. Here's Al Trotwick. Keith, it's, of course, clock watching time here in Nebraska. This is the old field house, the home of the freshman team. This is where everyone used to stare at during the old games up through 1965. This is the old clock. This used to be the end of the stadium. It used to have hands like a clock. No one could tell what time was left in the game except for a couple of special people. Then they built these stands, and as you can see, the clock ticks no more, and not as many people saw it or stared at it as once they did. Back to you. There's the fancy new stuff. Time remaining in the game. We are in the fourth quarter. A seven-point difference. Nebraska's ball first down at their 20. Steve Taylor going down the line with it. He's got to keep it, and he's going to lose a couple of yards. Wrestled down by Paul Miliazzo. Miliazzo. Miliazzo, a senior out of Kansas City. You know, because of Bosworth, the other linebackers for Oklahoma don't get as much credit as they deserve because they're outstanding linebackers. Nebraska's center that time, Cooper, took Bosworth down to the 35-yard line. <laughs> Second down and 12. Taylor back to throw it. Trying to set up a screen. Dumps it to Kalen. Kalen's got some help. Turns it back inside and turns right back into Bosworth. And Brian takes him down, and there's a penalty flag. And look out for a hold here. Tackle by... 44, on the play. So that will seriously crimp Nebraska's plans here. The ball is just short of the 20. Oklahoma might choose to decline this and bring up third and long. I don't know. I suppose you want to back them up, huh? Bosworth wanted to decline it. He looked over yeah. to Barry. I think Barry said take it. Yep. I think you're right. surprise going on there, of course, uh, would be the score that Jimmy gave you a moment ago, Arizona beating Arizona State in the fourth quarter. Miami plays Thanksgiving night. Alabama plays next Saturday against Old Fo Auburn, and we'll have the game for you here next Saturday on ABC, starting at 3 Eastern time. Legion Field in Birmingham. The penalty puts the football back inside the 10 to the 9. It'll be second down and 21. Steve Taylor gets his pass away, and it is incomplete, but he saved a sack by doing it. And I think he's hurt, Keith. Might be. Looks he is. Like he's shaking. So Steve Taylor is down. He's holding the left leg. Boy, you hate to see that. He had pressure from both sides. He got sandwiched. Here he goes now, and he's looking right now out to the corner for that pass, but he feels the pressure, goes back inside. Now watch his legs. Well, his feet were off the ground. That's a good sign. Yep. But he's in a lot of pain. This is the other angle now. Again, pressure. He feels it. Steps back up into the pocket. There are his legs. Took a shot right on the kneecap, though. If he goes out, that means Blakeman comes in. And Blakeman started last week, played well. Played the whole game last week. 19 of 37 are his stats. They put 70 points on the board with Blakeman at quarterback. Timeout for the injured Steve Taylor. So that'll mean Blakeman comes in, possibly the best passer in Nebraska's quarterback core. Yeah, but he comes in on third down and 21. back on the Nebraska nine. So the Sooner defensive people now. And Blake is going to put it up on his first play, and he hits the tight end, and a penalty flag goes down as number 87, Banderas, gets out of bounds around the 25-yard line. But let's see about the flag. He might be holding in the secondary. It's interference in the secondary against the Sooners. Fairly 
bold standing in like that. Isn't he coming off the bench on a cold night, not expecting yes, to play? They can move the uh, sticks with this, though. No, they can't either. Comes out to the 26. They get the down back. We got defensive <laughs> pass interference. Automatic first down. Yep, that's what it is. Lee Blakeman, a junior from Norfolk, Nebraska. The Three interference sports. did not come anywhere near the receiver, did it? And, uh, Banderas made the no, catch. That was right smack in the middle. Yeah. The catch was over on the right hash mark. Well, like Wallace Wade said, nobody ever wins a football game. Somebody loses it. Ball is out on the 24, where it's first down for the Cornhuskers, and Keith Jones has the ball. Jones is slowed behind the line of scrimmage, but turns it back inside and gets about three yards on the carry. The thing about both of these schools, if one guy goes out, they bring so much talent in to replace him. It's, uh, you know, they don't replace him. They just reload. Taylor comes back, and the crowd reacts. So he shook off the pain, and he's back in there at quarterback. And certainly Blake did his job while he was in. And it's second down and seven. Jones fumbles the football. It's rolling around. Fight for it. And I think Oklahoma's got a fair chance to get it. Bosworth says they've got it. And so do the officials. What a turnover. Whoa. We've got 8.36 to go in the football game. Derek White comes out of there. He outfought the stack with it. And 17-10 ball game as Jones costs it up for the second time today. But watch Brian Bosworth. Bosworth comes up and rips the ball out. CM44 right there, rips it out. The ball's loose. Then, of course, in the scramble, Oklahoma comes back and comes up with the football. But it was Bosworth who ripped that ball out of the arms of Jones. So the corn musker turned it over. Watch 44. See him in white at the top of your screen. Grab that ball. Now watch him yank it out of there. He's got a hand on it. And there it comes. First down for the Sooners at the Husker 33-yard line. Holloway gives it to Johnson. And Johnson gets to the 28. For a pickup of five yards. Go! A lot of time. More than eight minutes. Well, every time I see your old Johnson, I become more impressed. But he's had a star cross career. He's yet to play a full season. Three different injuries to his kneecaps. Severely curtailed his playing time. Second down and five. And it's a short five. Holloway follows Johnson into the hole. And the ball's fumbled. Nebraska gets it back. Mark Munford covers it. This place is rocking. up the middle now follows Johnson on the inside or oh, the ball was knocked loose just before he hit the ground keep in mind that ground cannot cause a fumble but it looked like Smith got a hand in there knocked it loose Tyrese Knox is now in at the eye back position Taylor keeps the ball faked it tried to get around the corner Banderas could not protect him long enough and Jamel Holloway on the sideline Second down and nine. Look at the ball now. See if he hits the ground first. Here comes 99. Watch his right arm. Well, the ball hit. He hits the ball right there and knocks it out. Taylor gets 
this pass off. He's got Banderas wide open and missed him. He had tremendous pressure on him. Give Taylor all the credit in the world for getting the pass away. But oh, what might have been because they had absolutely lost Banderas, the tight end. Oh, if he had thrown it earlier. But this, but that. If and buts were candy nuts. Oh, what a party we had. Hey, I want to tell you, you picked it up because the pressure was on it. And it was very difficult to get it off. Yeah, regular speed. It looks like the it looks like the ground caught it. Third down and nine. Third down and still about nine. Juggled it, gives it away to Knox, Tyrese Knox, and Knox gets it to the 34. And that leaves him two yards short of his first down. So the Cornhuskers will have to punt into the wind. Good call, though. They've been throwing the ball. They come back with a draw. It just shows you the discipline of a very fine Oklahoma defense. John Croker has punted three times today, 38, 36, and 37. Patrick Collins is the deep man. The Sooners have put three people back there. But Collins is the man they want to have the ball. Ricky Dixon, and, uh, and there's the punt by Croker. Pretty good one. It'll be taken by Dixon, fumbled by Dixon, and then he has to go down and cover it down at the 26. That's the second time that Red Dixon has dropped the ball in trying to field a punt. So the Sooners will have it first down. The 26 trailing by seven. 27 seconds to play. Oklahoma has the ball, and it's sitting right in between the 26 and 27-yard hash marks. They're into the field. Earl Johnson, Patrick Collins, Anthony Stafford behind Jamel Holloway, and they've got Keith Jackson now wide, not wide as a receiver. The tight end. And Holloway looks and throws and hits Shepard, who pitches it back. The ball is fumbled, rolling around on the ground. Nebraska's jumping up and down. And they've got the ball. Brian Washington covers it for the Cornhuskers. frustrated it's the old hook and lateral watch this it's set up perfectly too because Jamel just rips the ball out to Derek Shepard here he comes number three now he's going to pitch back here that's Spencer Tillman I'm sorry Anthony Stafford the hook and lateral the pass was thrown perfectly all he had to do was lateral back to Stafford and watch watch Holloway you talk about frustration and he wasn't the only one the entire offense came off like that and it's Nebraska now with the ball just inside the Oklahoma 44. Leading 17-7. Give it to Keith Jones. Cuts it back against the grain. Wraps both arms around the ball and gets to the 29. In the first 42 minutes of today's game, there were no turnovers. We had a little snow flurry. The wind has gotten stronger. It has got a goodly amount colder. And in the last 12 minutes, we have had six turnovers. Although early on, too, Keith, the ball was on the ground. They just recovered their own fumbles. It's been cold all day. And these are two teams that don't put it on the ground very often. No. Second down, about five and a half, just short of the 39 of Oklahoma. Taylor keeps it, and we'll lose a yard. give you an idea of what's been going on of late. It'll be third down and a good six yards now from the 40. Seventy-six thousand one hundred and ninety-eight. Watching the 67th game between the Sooners and the Cornhuskers. Keeps it and gets to the 40 and he's sandwiched there. Bosworth one more time. Bosworth is big, he's strong. He may talk a lot, but he backs it all up. Taylor tucks the ball away. Now to the left of your screen comes Bosworth, 44. He almost caused another fumble. Broker is in the punt on fourth and six. Nobody back for Oklahoma. 
They're going to let it bounce around. Sonny Brown is the only man sort of back. Broker hits it straight up in the air. The wind's going to knock it down. It depends on the bounce. It takes a Nebraska roll. And down at the six. Again, Nebraska is lucky. The ball very well could have bounced the other direction. But instead, it went for the home folks. All right, Oklahoma is 94 yards away from the promised land with 4-10 to play in the ball game, trailing 17-10. It's become a game of turnovers here in the late going. Holloway keeps the ball and gets it around the corner. He gets taken down hard at about the 14-yard line by Kevin Parsons and Charles Fryer. We saw Charles Fryer the first game of the season against Florida State. That was his first start. He had a sprained hand. He eventually broke the hand, came back. He's a tough little guy on that corner. Second and two. Stands to throw, lets it go deep too long. Ash intended for Carl Cavanis, the sophomore out of Tulsa. The defender was Brian Davis. Now the clock stops at 3:31 to play in the game. Brian Davis, uh, he jumps right in your hip pocket and runs with you. He had a pass interference call earlier in the ball game, only because he didn't look back for the ball. Didn't look back that time, but the ball wasn't catchable. But as for running with the receiver and staying right with him, he's there. They send Shepard wide now on third and two. Give the ball to Collins. And Collins slashes in. And he is short of the first down. Now it's tough time. Well, there's still more than three minutes left. You've got to punt it out of there. No, they aren't. They're going to go for the first down. Big eight title at stake. Put it all on the line right here. Fourth and one, just outside the 15. Holloway keeps it. And gets the first down, fumbles the football. Penalty flag goes down. Nebraska's got the ball. You got a late flag. You got another face mask call. That official on this side has called five face mask penalties in this game. I'll tell you, though, we have seen on the replay that every one has been accurate. Oh, yeah, I didn't say that. I just said he's, he's been the man to make the call. <laughs> They're all running right at him. Nebraska's going to lose the football here. They recovered that fumble. Brian Davis was on the ball, I think. And I'm saying they're going to lose the ball because that flag came out, and I'm almost certain I saw that face mask grab. There it is. Now do we have another penalty? Neil Smith in there at Laurier and about. Now, Jamel Holloway saying, look, he grabbed my face mask. That's what caused the fumble. I'm trying to read lips, I'm sure that Sam Moffat said, yes, you get the ball. You keep the ball. Mass call that takes the ball away from Nebraska gives Oklahoma new life. That was a five yard face mask live ball against the defense. The fumble was recovered by the, by the defense. It's recovered by all five, so we have first down. There's there it is. Mask. So it is first down Oklahoma up at the 25-yard line. Time 2.35 to go in the game. Nebraska leads by seven. Holloway's pass across the field is caught 
Good catch by Carl Cavanis. He threw that ball all the way across the field, and Cavanis bobbled it and pulled it in with soft hand. First of all, the ball was drilled. Secondly, Cavanis had great concentration because the ball was high. He goes up, extends to the highest point, gets his fingers on it, knocks it down, makes the catch, and gets the feet in. Only needs one. He got two. And it's second down and two now as the ball comes out past the 33. Let's it go again, and it is complete to Shepard, and it's a big one. All the way down to the Nebraska 32-yard line. Brian Davis finally brought him down. Never fails. You say the guy's in the hip pocket all night. You turn around, you compliment a guy, and now he gets beaten. See that? He's beaten right off by Shepard. This is a 35-yard play. He's making up ground here, Davis is. Again, he doesn't look back for the football, though. Shepard makes the play. The difference is having the win at their back. Going into the win, that's a dying quail. With the win, it carried softly to him. From the 32, two minutes and 21 seconds to play in the game. Holloway pitches it back. It is Spencer Tillman. And Tillman is out of bounds at the Nebraska 23. That's a gain of at least eight, maybe close to nine yards. Second down and one. The Sooners have all their timeouts remaining. 2.15 to play in the game. Holloway, pinned down. We'll get a, uh, just about the line of scrimmage. Kevin Parsons and Brian Davis defensively. Where did you do? That's right, he didn't make it. He didn't make it. They're going to bring the change in. They want to bring the change so that Oklahoma will know exactly where they are. And the clock shows 2-0-3 to play. Tremendous penetration that time by Chris Spock with the defensive tackle for Nebraska. He jammed everything up there and let the pursuit come and make the tackle. Pretty close to a yard. Third down. Holloway keeps it. Behind the surge, looks to have the first down. Around the 21. Nope. Put him at the 20. You've got 147 to play in the game. 17 to 10. If Oklahoma scores, they have to try for two to win. Field for the Sooners. Holloway's got it. Turns it inside. And stopped at about the 17 by Kevin Carson. These two Nebraska linebackers have been pretty busy today. Munford and Parsons both. Timeout, Oklahoma. 126 to play. Term play so far. This is a possession for the championship of the Big 8 Conference. Lydell Carr is in at fullback. Tillman's back at halfback. Collins, the other halfback. And Holloway throws. It is Jackson. It is touchdown, Oklahoma! <laughs> now they've got to go for two. You've got 122 to play in the game. Big play by Jackson, but again, 
Watch number 32, Brian Davis. He's right there and doesn't turn around and look for the football. He's got good inside-out position. Go I'm sorry, Timmy, but they're not going to go for two. I'm a little surprised at it. They're not going. Lasher is out to go for the extra point. A tie gives them the Big 8 championship. The kick is good. So they go for the singleton and move into a 17-17 tie. And the tie will give the Sooners the Big 8 title. Panasonic, the future of office automation. Advanced equipment with an extraordinary... Twenty-two to work, and Dale Klein's longest field goal is 44 yards. He'll be working into the wind if they get it that far. That's right. Barry Switzer making the decision to go for the surest point there to get his tie gives him a 5-0 and one record in the conference and the championship, and sends them off to the Orange Bowl. Can't fault the call. I tell you right now, I can't in any sense fault the call. Here's Steve Taylor wanting to throw to somebody. And there is nobody to throw to. And Scott Carl finally comes over and knocks him out of bounds. Tom Osborne's upset because he thought it was a late hit out of bounds. Don't count Nebraska out of this yet. They still have plenty of time to work. 115 if they can get it up the field. They've got to be able to pass the ball effectively. Well, Oklahoma now has got uh, Ricky Dixon playing center field. I mean, he's way back downfield. Watch this now. This is what Tom Osborne was upset about. Here comes Garl. And Garl's hitting him out of bounds. Picked up a couple of yards. Second down, eight. Taylor trying to get around the corner and steps on the chalk up around the 24. Richard Reed had pursuit on him. And Reed forced him to the boundary, and he stepped out of bounds. So it is third down and about six. There are your standings in the Big Eight Conference. With 109 to play and having gone out of bounds successively now, it's third down and about six. They don't do something here. The Sooners get the ball back, and with the wind at their back, they still would have a chance to win it. Taylor's pass underneath, thrown hard, and Vaughn Shepard couldn't pull it in, and now it is fourth down. Well, you're right. Now we'll talk about the clock the other way. There's plenty of time for Oklahoma to win this thing outright. Oklahoma right now, as you look at this replay, is playing five defensive backs with Dixon way down the field. They're in a zone coverage. They throw the ball underneath, and it just can't be caught. Ball is on the 24-yard line. Broker is in to punt, we think. He hits it. Good one. Penalty flag dropped by the back judge way back up field. Derek White has the ball trying to return it for Oklahoma. The clock is still going and now stops at 50 seconds to play. It was a good 45 yard punt into that win. Now let's see about that penalty flag. Penalty flag on the play. Tackled by Schmitzberg. Disregard the flag. I think he was reaching for his bean bag and got the flag. I think <laughs> that's exactly what happened. So they pick it up. And the Oklahoma Sooners in a 17-17 tie with the Nebraska Cornhuskers at 50 seconds to work with. They have two timeouts. They have, the, most importantly, the wind at their back. And the ball is just short of the 35-yard line on their side of the field. Carr, Collins, Tillman behind Holloway. And Shepard, the wide man. And they give it to Carr, and Carr breaks it and gets it up to the 47-yard line and picks up a first down, and that stops the clock with 43 seconds to play in the game. And the Sooners will spend one of their two timeouts. 
So Oklahoma trying to come up with something to put them in position to try to win the ball game with a field goal. Well played football game. The big surprise in that One both ball. teams put the ball on the hey, ground Kat. so often. Great for Miami. It's off the I think warm. Texas told you we weren't going to Oklahoma. We told you we weren't going to be cold in New Orleans. Everybody in Dickinson. Hey, it ain't over yet. We got eight hey, seconds. Excitement is still there. Here we go, baby. 18 seconds remaining now on third down at about 12. A 17 17 tie. And Oklahoma has spent its last time out. If they pick up 15 yards, then I think Thompson would have a shot at it. They want to win this thing outright, or they yeah. would have let the clock run out already for yeah. the time, the Orange Bowl. Passes away, and Jackson oh. makes a spectacular catch and is knocked out of bounds at the 14-yard line. And time remaining, nine seconds, and time for the kicking team to get on the field. Now, I, you go back and look at that play, and you'll see something very interesting here. Now, watch what Jackson does. He's got Roderick Thomas trying to cover him here. Jackson gives him a push, gets away from him, and makes a spectacular catch. But see, he was just trying to work his way back against Thomas to get to the inside. I'm not so sure he just blocked him out of the way. He was trying to get his position to get back in to make the catch. Boy, he's got some big hands, great talent. Nine seconds, and great Oklahoma now player. can win it outright. 31 seconds, uh, 31 yards in nine seconds. And Lasher's kick is good. And the Sooners win it with six seconds to go. I say they win it. You've got a penalty flag thrown on Oklahoma because of the celebration on the field. But they don't care. What a great comeback by Oklahoma. By their own admittance, they're not a great come-from-behind team, but they maintain their game plan. They made one quick adjustment, started sending the halfback in motion so they could position the safety. They went to the air a little bit more. They came back 2017. Tremendous come-from-behind win by Oklahoma. Of course, you do have six seconds to go. Oklahoma has owned the fourth quarter. It will be assessed on the kickoff, 15 yards. The penalty is for the celebration, having uh, unauthorized people out on the field. Here's the play again to Keith Jackson. It's a well-thrown ball, but I want you to watch Jackson working to the inside. He has as much right to that football as anybody, and he's coming back to get it. Now, here's the contact, because he's working back to the inside. Thomas almost tipped it. Jackson did tip it, caught his own tip, and takes it down, so they set up the field goal. This will give you a better idea how he's working. There's the bump off the line. That's a good play by Thomas. Now, Tom, Thomas does turn, see? Now they both get tangled up there. I think that's incidental contact. That's a tremendous play by a great athlete. The Big 8 Championship. They mark off 15-yard penalty, which means Oklahoma will kick off from the 20. So that moves Nebraska now up the field a goodly ways. The wind, however, is at the back of Thompson, and Thompson, the punter, very strong in his uh, kickoff. So let's see. We've got Dana Brinson and Rod Smith back. Well, you're right, he's been strong. He's been kicking it out of the end zone. But with this penalty, you're right, they have a chance for a return. From the 20, with six seconds, squib kick fielded up at the 41 by Doug Dalton, a fullback. And Dalton returns the ball to the 42 of Oklahoma. One second to play in the game, and Nebraska quickly called a timeout. I thought they were going to start lateral on the ball. There was pretty thick traffic. I don't think they could have found a place. So unless Nebraska can produce a miracle, Oklahoma will be the Big 8 Conference champion with a 5-0-1 record and head for the Orange Bowl while Nebraska goes to the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans to play the champion of the Southeastern Conference.
Big ball game tonight relative to the host team in the uh, Sugar Bowl, LSU and Notre Dame in Baton Rouge. The last play of the game right here. Taylor is taken down. Taken down by Steve Bryan, and the game is over. Oklahoma wins it by a score of 20 to 17. You could feel the momentum change as we headed into the fourth quarter. Well, they all, Oklahoma owned the fourth quarter. No question about it. For 13 points in the fourth quarter. Good college football game. This ABC Sports Exclusive has been brought to you by Panama.